heavily. Temperature is 48 degrees, and the Lions try to clinch the division crown. We look at the standings, and you see that Detroit, with their record of 8-6, and six, could win the division for the first time since 1957. Green Bay, Minnesota, and the Bears are all still alive, and we'll keep you up to date on scores of other games right up to snuff. I'm Jack Buck, along with Hank Stram. And, Hank, these Bengals keep talking about a preseason game that these two teams played in Pontiac. Yeah, it's amazing that they still remember that preseason game. They lost it 35 to 7, 34 to 7 in Detroit, and they're still talking about it. We talked to Mike Brown yesterday and Paul Brown today, and that was the first thing they talked about, how badly they were beaten in that game and how much respect and admiration they have for the Detroit team. The Lions have won six out of eight. Hank Stram thinks that first down is most important today. I think in this kind of a game, I think what you get on first down is very, very important. I think in the final analysis, turnovers, field positions, and the kicking game will make the difference in the outcome of this contest. It usually does, but even more so in this game this afternoon. Hank, the Detroit Lions have won the toss, and they'll get the ball, and I'm sure that the Bengals would just as soon play defense at the start. I think that's right. I, I, I know if I, I were in their position, I would much rather start the game on defense than I would on offense. And, you know, one thing that's impressive about the Detroit offense is that they uh, have rushed for 184 and a half yards in the last four weeks. That's pretty strong, and yet the uh, Cincinnati Bengals have only given up 60, 76 yards per game. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, and Detroit, I'm sure, will come off the bus trying to run the football. Little Jim Breach will kick it off, and the deep men are Robbie Martin, number 83, and Ken Jenkins, number 31. The, the turf is very, very wet already. Hope you enjoy the game, and away we go. Good luck to your favorite team. And Martin touched it before it went out of bounds. That wasn't a very smart move, was it? No, it wasn't. It was going to go out, I think. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Usually, I've said this many, many times in the past, but usually 90% of the time the team to kick off, kicks off, scores first. This might be, it doesn't mean they're going to win the game, but they usually score first. Eric Hipple is the quarterback, Billy Sips, Sims, and James Jones, Mark Nichols, and the good rookie Jeff Chadwick. And up front, the rookie Steve Mott anchors the line, Chris Dietrich, Homer Elias, Don Greco, Keith Dorney, and Ulysses Norris are at their seven-yard line. And they better hang on to the ball. The one thing is important when you play against Cincinnati, they pursue so well that sometimes it's very hard to get outside. The play comes to the nine-yard line as Billy Sims carried on first down, and Jim LeClaire tackled him up front for Cincinnati. Eddie Edwards, Jerry Boyarski, and Ross Browner. They've been better since Browner came back. Dinkle, LeClaire, Cameron, and Williams are the linebackers. And the deep backs are Lewis Breeden, Bobby Kemp, Robert Jackson, and Ken Riley, who's going to be honored here at halftime. This may be his final season. I think we'll find as we go along, Jack, that Detroit will have a little bit more success going straight ahead than they're going to try to do going sideways. Here's a give to the fullback, Thompson. He got outside near the 15-yard line, short of a first down, third down coming up. Larry Lee is playing the right guard spot now in place of Don Greco. That tackle by Robert Jackson and Reggie Williams. There's a flag down on the play. Jim Tunney is the referee today. Looks like it's going to rain all afternoon. Talk it over with Glenn Cameron. Detroit has been penalized 110 times this year. Most yards in the league. Illegal motion, number 81, still second down. The to the That's a very deceptive stat, uh, Jack, because I think the uh, Raiders, the L.A. Raiders, lead the league in penalties every year, and they're the winningest team in the National Football League over a period of 20 years. Isn't that something? It is. Eric Kippel has completed 53%. He's a very good runner. Sims is in the end zone, cruises out. Oh, he got knocked down at the nine-yard line. Third and long coming up, a neck-high tackle by Reggie Williams. Tom Dinkle, number 52, was in a good position to make the play, but he really got a great hit. And uh, for that reason, he was able to get on the outside of Tom Dinkle, number 52, the left linebacker. 
and a late flag was thrown. It's a flag to deal with. Maybe that tackle we we're talking about was an illegal one. It evidently was. Yep. I thought it might be Hank, but the official closest to the play didn't throw it. It's a first down at the 25. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 57, first down. Reggie Williams with that tackle, unsportsmanlike conduct. Let's take a look at it and see if we can find it in the picture. Here's Sims cutting back, coming back to the inside. They slip right by him. Oh, that's it. Yeah, it's a high hit by Reggie Williams. Right above the shoulder pads and right in the head area, and that's why they call the penalty. A first down for the Lions at their 25. And still Vince Thompson in the backfield, Norris in motion, and Sims going right. And Eddie Edwards got him, and another flag has been thrown. Eddie Edwards trailed the play. You know these Bengals are out of the playoffs. Their record of uh, six and eight precludes them of postseason playoff side. That's going to make it first and five for Detroit. So they're getting the breaks on the penalties. Offside against the Bengals. The Bengals are out of it, but they're turned on and they have won five of their last seven games. Yeah, they're very excited about their team. They think they have a very fine team. I and talking to uh, Forrest Greg yesterday. Offside, 49, five yards. Still first down. Forrest Greg indicated yesterday that they felt in the draft they would want to take a quarterback and a running back. They felt that he feels that they need a big play guy, and that's really the only thing they need to be a very, very outstanding team. Frazier, the linebacker, lined up offside. That's unusual. It's first down and five now at the Detroit 30. They're getting a couple of breaks with these penalties. Sims would knock down at the line of scrimmage. Second down and five. I'm surprised, Jack, that they continue to try to go outside uh, the way the Cincinnati Bengal defense pursues their defensive ends and their linebackers. It's usually very difficult to do that, but in spite of that, they're still trying to get it done. You see that the defense is the is second in the NFL against the rush. They're number one overall in defense in the National Football League. Reggie Williams was a little more gentle with that last tackle. And they're one, one, and four total defense, which is very strong for a team with that kind of a record. Second and five. Hipple hasn't thrown it yet. Sims tries it up the middle. Third down coming up. Third and about three as he ran into Boyarski, the nose guard. Third down for the Lions. Talking to Monty Clark yesterday, he indicated that he was very, very high on Steve Mott, who uh, has been doing a very, very good job for their offensive line. He's a hub of things inside. He's 6'3", 250. Played his football at Alabama, number five draft choice in 1983, a rookie. But they're very, very high on this fine young player. Third down and two for Detroit at their 33. Jones is in the backfield now. In the shotgun is Hipple. Going to throw on third and two. It's incomplete. They'll have to kick. The ball was thrown low to Billy Sims. It was covered by LeClaire, the linebacker. I think he tried to throw the ball a little bit too quickly that time, Jack. They were in a three-man rush with eight people dropping back. He would have had plenty of time to let the linebackers drop back into their hook areas and maybe gotten the, the ball uh, to Sims in time in good position to make the first down, but he hurried himself just a little bit, I thought. You see the average. Black has had one kick blocked, and he'll be kicking to John Simmons, who is back inside his 30, and he is average eight yards per punt return. Even though they were helped by a couple of penalties, the Lions have to punt it away. Low snap, Black handles it. Pretty good kick. It will be returned by Simmons from the 31. And he's to the 36 or 7-yard line and tackled by James Harrell of the Detroit Lions. So the Bengals get the ball for the first time. The 13-year veteran, Ken Anderson, is at the controls with Charles Alexander and Pete Johnson in the backfield. Steve Kreider is starting. Chris Collinsworth has a bad ankle, and he may not play today. And Isaac Curtis, the other wide receiver. The big offensive line, Munoz, Lapham, Montoya, Wilson, the tight end, Ross, and they're anchored by Dave Remington, the good rookie center from Nebraska. First down at the Bengals, 36. Motion by Alexander and a pass play by Anderson. It's caught at midfield. Kreider with the ball. First down. What did they tell us about Kreider? A well, you know the thing is, receiver and faster than he looks. Yeah, he's four, he's got four or five speed, and I don't think anybody realizes he's that fast. 
Here's the Lions defense, the four-man front with Doug English out, Curtis Green, William Gay, Mike Fanning starting, and Mike Coper playing very well at the right side. The linebackers, Cobb, Van Teddy, and Williams. Watkins, McNorton. McNorton has six interceptions along with Hall and Graham. 42. First down at the line, 47. There goes the big truck, Pete Johnson. He's like Riggins, and me. You think he gets nothing, and he ends up with five or six. Yeah, he moves the pile. That's the big thing about Johnson. He just moves the pile and uh, hits into the pile and comes out the other end. He's big and he's strong. He's like a tackle playing fullback, and he's especially good going straight ahead. Talking to Forrest Gregg yesterday, he said, we're just going to hope it rains, and then we'll give it to the big truck. And uh, they might have to put some chains on him today on those shoes to keep him from slipping, but uh, he's a real good, outstanding runner. Banning made that last tackle along with Williams, and it's second and five. Anderson, long downfield, and Kreider coming back, couldn't get it. The cornerback, Watkins, had trouble staying with him on the comeback pattern, but it is incomplete. And let's watch the big center, 288-pounder Dave Remington. Watch him, number 64. Watch him against Fanning. Not much holding going on, is there? <laughs> but uh, that's what they've done with the pass protection. They've legalized holding, and he did a good job of containing Fanning, but he held on the play. They've legalized holding? They've legalized holding with the rule change that they've made, yes. It is third down and five. No pressure. First down. Curtis is out of bounds with a first down. Boy, did you see how certain Curtis was of catching the ball before he even moved? Well, they flooded the zone that time, Jack. They had three people on two on the outside, and all he did, Curtis, was go over by the sideline between the numbers and the hash mark, and he anchored there, waited, waited for the for the ball to be thrown to him or to the guy that in the next zone up the field and they got to him in good shape and as you say he did first things first caught the ball and then tried to run with it. Benny Ricardo has kicked the field goal 30 yards and the Vikings lead the Bears three to nothing at Minnesota. First down and a toss to Johnson reached down and got it and he carried for four yards to the 30 yard line and the Bengals are getting in close. Mike Coper was there to meet him. Number 66. That was a bad toss that time by Anderson. He got it out there just a little bit too low, and it broke Johnson's stride. Had he been able to get the ball about number high and out in front about a yard and a half in front of that number, he would have been able to make a lot more yardage on the play. Johnson has 12 rushing touchdowns. The ball is at the 30, and it's second and six. And Seattle is ahead of the Giants in the first quarter, seven and up. Seattle is still alive. The Giants are out of it. Motion by Alexander. Here comes Johnson. He has a first down. At the Detroit 23, a couple of rushes and a first down for Johnson and company. Max Montaya, boy, number 65. Watch, watch the guard, number 65, the right guard. Watch the block he gets on the linebacker out in front to the left, if you can see it. Here he comes around. Watch the block he gets on 57. A beautiful block. Look at that beautiful block by Montoya. And that provides Johnson with an opportunity to get upfield and make yardage on the play. And Teddy went down, and Johnson got the first down. It's at the 23. Alexander, the tailback. Following Johnson, a good block and a big hole. First down. Another first down for Cincinnati, and they're tearing up the pee patch here with McNaughton and Graham making the tackle. Big block by Pete Johnson. Yeah, look at from the I formation. Watch Pete Johnson. He gets a good block on number 59, Jimmy Williams, and uh, Charles Alexander the Great. That's what they call him at LSU. Pops through there for a big gain and a first down. At the Lions 11 yard line. Eight. 35 left in the first quarter, no score. This is when Johnson gets tough down around the goal line here. He pops it in there and he's good for a couple of yards to the nine yard line. Pretty good drive by the Bengals. Excellent drive. And of course, I think in this kind of weather, I think anytime that you throw the ball, you have a distinct advantage over the defensive people because they're very 
very afraid, very afraid to, to fall and slip on a pattern, so they're very cautious for that reason. You ought to be able to throw pretty well. Look at this. Cleveland, Cleveland is still alive, three to nothing over Houston. Cleveland a record of eight and six, and they get ahead of Houston, and they'll try to pile up all the points they can because that may be important in the final determination of playoff teams. Second and nine at the ten. And it is what? Intercepted. Intercepted by Detroit. Coming away with the ball is the linebacker Cobb. That's his third of the year, and that stops that. That was a terrible pass by Anderson. Who tried to get it over the top in a ricochet, and Cobb, number 53, came up with the interception. Look at this. He tried to get it right over the top. Trying to get it to Dan Ross. Yes, inside to Ross. The ball was deflected, and watch number 53 come into the picture. There he is. He catch it, catches it right off the turf. Alvin Hall is the one who knocked the ball up into the air. And Gary Cobb got it. Detroit has it at their 20. Well, Merry Christmas to all you Detroit Lion fans, and here's your Christmas present. <laughs> watch this. Now watch this. It pops up into the air. We thought at first it was a good interception, but it really isn't. It hit the ground. It hit the ground first, and it should have should have been called an incomplete forward pass. It looked like that, Jack. So there's your Christmas present for all you Lion fans. Here comes Billy. Fumble! Cincinnati has it. And who got it? The fellow they're going to honor at halftime, Ken Riley. It may be his final year in football. He's a 15-year veteran. And we talked about running straight ahead. That's the first time they run straight ahead. Look at the block. Homer Elias, number 61, 72, Diederich. Look at a nice blocking at the point of attack. And Billy Sims puffs right through there, but the ball is jarred loose by Robert Jackson. Robert Jackson and finally fallen on by Ken Riley, number 13. Here we go. And the ball is at the Lions 38. Bomb into the end zone. Incomplete. And a flag. It was intended for Kreider, was being covered by McNorton. And it's interference against Detroit. It'll be first and goal at the one. We'll get a look at that in just a moment. Bruce McNaughton, number 29, one for one. Back in the defense, number 29, first down, ball face to the one yard line. First and goal at the one, 723 remaining in the scoreless first quarter. Let's look at that one. Watch this right hand side of your pitcher. Well, you don't really see it very well. You don't see the contact, which was evidently made by McNaughton while the ball was still in the air. You think they'll give the ball to Johnson? If he doesn't, we got a scoop. his 13th rushing touchdown. Alexander, the other back, made a good block, and the Bengals jump up in front. Watch the right side of the line. Montoya, he's pulling on the play 65, and Johnson is just looking for an area to hit. Number 35, Alvin Hall, tried to make the tackle, but he ran right through him like he wasn't even there and went in the end zone for the touchdown. So it was a fumble and an appearance call and a one-yard run, and it's 6 to nothing. Breach has missed only one all year. 35 out of 36. We have 7.19 left in the first quarter. And the Bengals are on top by seven. The Lions have better get to work if they want to clinch the division here this afternoon. The turnover cost them seven points. Hank Stram says that usually the team that kicks off scores first. That happened again here today. 7-19 remaining in the first quarter. Breach will kick it off. Ken Jenkins and Robbie Martin are deep with Jenkins closest to you. And the Lions trail.
from the three. He went seven. He flew five yards through the air. Martin's down at the 25-yard line. The big tackle by Ray Horton of the Bengals. Number 20. Well, immediately following this game, you're going to see some additional good action. It'll be played at Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas, and they're each 12 and 2. The Redskins and the Cowboys. You think that'll be a good game, Hank? If it isn't, <laughs> it'll really be a mystery because those teams have been talking about the game all year long, and it should be the, one of the great games, really, of the season. Here's the first down pass by Hipple to the sideline. And it is caught by the excellent rookie, Jeff Chadwick. Hank, you start looking, looking for a rookie of the year in this league, and you may have one right there in Chadwick. It's always interesting to see a free agent. You really pull for that kind of a player, a free agent make a team like the Detroit Lions. He's an exceptional kid, and uh, I talked to him last night. He's very, very excited, naturally. Look at this score. Minnesota 6 to zip over the Chicago Bears. But we'll talk more about Jeff as we go along. Chadwick down at the Detroit 41 in a first down. Ken Riley made that tackle. And not much with the fullback, Vince Thompson. Leonard Thompson, again, probably will not play for the Lions today. Eddie Edwards with that tackle. Second down and nine. I think, Jack, as we go along here, I think, I think we're going to see that they have to throw the ball a little bit more on first and ten rather than just run it consistently on first and ten. Talking about Detroit, I think they have to throw a little bit more and then come back to the run. A fumble. A fumble, and Hipple picked it up and got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all, making it third and nine. You know, I'm amazed to see every time we've seen Detroit play, they have a bad exchange somewhere in the game between the center and the quarterback. It's hard to understand after playing 14 games in the season why they would have that kind of a problem. Although when you have a big guy like Jerry Boyarski on your nose or Crumry, why it's easy to understand why the center is very concerned about blocking the guy and sometimes forgets about getting the ball up like he should. It's in the second quarter. The Eagles playing New Orleans tough. Third down and nine. And Hipple is sacked inside the 35. Glenn Collins got in there, along with Gary Burley, number 67. They have a good rush now. Watch this. They're in a shotgun formation. Watch 67. Gary Burley come through there. He gets through two guys, and he's the one that makes the tackle, gets him low, tackles his left leg, and gets him low and gets a sack. Gary Burley. So Mike Black is kicking for the second time. And Burley's a number three draft choice from Pittsburgh. Drafted number three and 75, 6'3", 269. Here's a pretty good punt for Simmons to handle. Back at the 24. Oh, he was collared, wasn't he? Brought down at the 29-yard line. So the punt goes to the Cincinnati 29, the tackle by Johnson of Detroit. A 43-yard punt has put the Bengals back at their 29. They scored the last time they had the ball. And we have 4.41 left in the first quarter. Alexander in the backfield with Johnson. Tight end is Ross. Here comes Alexander. And he is to the 31. Oh, well, how are the Bears and the Vikings doing? Just like that, after two field goals by Ricardo, Chicago goes ahead. Uh, and Peyton on a 74-yard pass play. Both those teams are still involved with the playoffs. Jimmy Williams made the tackle for Detroit along with Ken Fantetti. Well, Max Montoya, number 65, is pulling a lot today, and he's really making some great, great blocks on a linebacker who is getting penetration. Is he big enough to block? Well, I, I don't know whether he is or not, Jack. He's only 6'5 and 275. A pretty big guard. Here's Johnson. He just won't stop. Will he third and short coming up? Third down and two for the Bengals, and let's go to New York and Brent Musburger. Jack, the Chicago Bears have just gone ahead on this play. A lateral to Matt Suey from Jim McMahon. And Suey comes up throwing. 
Peyton is open deep, 74 yards. The Bears kick the extra point. They're up 7-6. to six. Back to Jeff. The Chicago Bears are still in it, despite their record of 6-8. and eight. These Bengals, 6-8, and eight, are out of it. Third and two. They're leaning like they might run right, unless they send somebody in motion. Let's see what they do here. Uh, they're going to pass right. Oh, look at Ross was wide open. Ross was wide open down the field, didn't have a chance to throw the ball to him. It's incomplete. Ross, the tight end, had outrun the safety man. And it's time for the Bengals to punt. If you look at Ken Anderson, who is now in his 13th year, he tried to get the ball to Alexander, and it didn't get there. Graham was covering. And this will be the first punt by Pat McAnally. He's averaged 41.6. Back to get it, Robbie Martin. We saw Martin return one for a touchdown earlier this year. And they will not try to block it, Jack. They don't want to take a chance of roughing the kicker. They'll let him kick it. Martin has a chance from the 28, 30. And he's to the 34-yard line. So the Lions get it as they trail the tackle by Steve Maidlow. Clark is reading the Cincinnati Inquirer. <laughs> Checking the grocery list. And but there's Forrest Gregg. Forrest Gregg and both coaches were very concerned talking to them yesterday. Monty Clark and uh, Teddy Marchaprota both alternated to help call in plays for their offensive team. From the Lions 34 yard line. And some pretty good yards. It was hauled in by Vince Thompson. I think they have to do, I mentioned that the last series, Jack, I think they have to do more of that, throwing on first and ten, and then go back to the run, and I think they'd be more successful with that kind of a blend. Well, New Orleans still alive in the playoff, playing at Philadelphia. They lead in the second quarter, seven to nothing, and Houston has caught Cleveland, 3-3. Houston is out, Cleveland's still in. Dinkle and Leclerc made that tackle. It was an eight-yard pass play to Vince Thompson. And there is a Detroit first down. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Bengals, as they call them over here, and the National Football League is prohibited. Billy Sims ran for a first down to the 45. And we have 150 left in the first quarter. And the Bengals lead 7-0. Sims has been hot. Norris goes in motion. First down pass again. Threw behind. He threw behind Chadwick. And he threw behind him, Jack. Eddie Edwards, number 73, was really getting good penetration, and he had to get rid of the ball like he did. He had a man wide open in the middle area. Edwards has had a fine year. Oh, yeah. He comes into the game with 12 sacks. And, uh, but they let up per... They put a lot of pressure on him that time, and he threw the ball badly. Now Chadwick comes to the left, and it is Nichols to the right as Seattle hangs under their lead 7-3 over the Giants in the first quarter. Tipple again, a little running room. And a comeback pattern to the wide receiver over there, Nichols, and nothing good. You know, one thing on a fast track like this and a wet track, you have to be very careful how you cut. For example, if you're on the right side of the formation and you're going to break to the sideline to your right, you want to make sure that you push off your left foot. Sometimes if you try to cut off your right foot going to the right, you're going to slip and fall because you have no base. And I think that's what happens last time, the last time on Mark Nichols' outside move to the sideline. It is third and ten and Ray Griffin, the extra back, comes in for the Bengals. And a four-man rush. Billy Sims trying to get the first down. He just couldn't get there. And he is short. He is short, I think. Let's see where they finally mark it. Oh, no, they're going to give it to him. It's a... Well, that's going to be a first down now. He got more progress than I thought he had with Ray Horton covering. They're going to measure, but I'm telling you, he made it. Yeah, it looks like he got a lot more. As you mentioned, Jack, he got a lot more out of it than I thought he did by the way the official marked the ball. 
The ball rests at the Cincinnati 45. You know, I talked to Hipple yesterday and asked him about the difference of throwing the ball inside and then going outside like he'll be today. That's a first down, you're right. He said there is a dramatic difference. He said you're, you're so used to throwing without any resistance, no wind, no uh, bad weather, no rain, no anything. And when you come out in this kind of a game, you're not, you have to be careful that you don't try to overcompensate and throw the ball a little differently than you should. One thing about Sims on that last play, he knew how far he had to go. He well, the, the most important thing was he knew he had to catch the ball first. And uh, that's what happened on the play. He made enough for the first down. Billy up the middle. Good for two or three. Less than a minute remaining in the first quarter. Glenn Cameron, the tackler, number 50. I talked to Chris Diederich last night and asked him about his responsibility of blocking Ross Browner. He said, boy, he's one of the best defensive ends in the league. And uh, I call him a club rusher because he comes across and really bangs you tough to get to the quarterback. And I think really watching him play, I think you're much better to run at him than to let him rush the passer. Second and seven at the Cincinnati 42. Intercepted by Breeden. He wanted to make sure he held onto the ball. He went out of bounds. Fans thought it was a late hit by Norris. There is no flag. But the Bengals get the second Detroit turnover. And they're at their 26. Here we go. Chadwick bump and run on the outside by Breeden. He gives him a bump right off the line of scrimmage. Watch the ball, though. The ball was being thrown outside, and uh, he had outside leverage on him all the way. No way in the world you're going to complete that kind of a ball with outside leverage. And Chadwick is trying to come over and make the play from the backside. Hadn't gotten there yet, and he's finally knocked out of bounds. That was by... a legal hit, too. Oh, it was. No question about that. The ball's at the Bengal 26. We only have 14 seconds left in the first quarter. Well, Detroit has turned it over for the second time. There's Pete Johnson. And he got three yards, and the first quarter will come to a close with that one. Two Lion turnovers in the first quarter. One of them cost them seven points. Gary Cobb made that tackle along with Martin Moss. Trying to clinch their first division crown since 1957, but it's not happening so far. From their 29, second and seven for the Bengals. Anderson, short of a first down, but a pass completion to the 35. Third down and one coming up. Hauling it in was Kreider, and Bobby Watkins covered him. We haven't seen Collinsworth. He has a bad ankle and probably will not play. Here's another score for you. The Bears, who fell behind, have now added a field goal and increased their lead. First quarter, 10 to 6 over Minnesota. And a couple of more scores for you. Seattle carries that 7-3 lead into the second quarter over the Giants. And Houston's ahead of Cleveland, 10-3 in the first quarter. Very young team is coming on, Jack. They're getting better and better. There's Alexander trying for the first down, and he gets it. A first down for the Bengals, despite the tackle by Jimmy Williams. Let's watch Mike Cofer, the rookie from Tennessee, number 66. And he's 6'5", 245. Look at him get penetration. He's coming all the time. He dances every dance. And talking to Monty Clark, he said, you know, he runs. He's a great, great runner. And they take everybody's pulse after practice, after running. Normally, it's about 30. His is down to 15. It's amazing. He sleeps while he runs. First down. Pete Johnson gets some valuable yards for the Bengals, and that offensive line here is taking charge for Cincinnati. Well, they're big enough to take charge of anything. Munoz is 286. Lapham is 262. Uh, the uh, center is 265 uh, or 288. R Remington is. Montoya is 275. And Wilson is 271. Those big folks. And Teddy made that tackle on Johnson. Second down and five. Here's Alexander, the other back. That's a first down. Into Detroit territory. Down to the 47 with Alvin Hall attacking. One thing you have to understand, too, with Detroit, they play an overshifted defense. 
and an under shift to defense. Over shift meaning that you move a man over to the tight end side and sometimes on other occasions move a man away from the tight end side They're taking advantage of the cutback opportunities. There's Ed Beard, the defensive coordinator of the Detroit Lions came out of retirement to help Monty Clark after Jackie Simpson, who was a defensive coordinator, died June 1st. He came out of retirement has really done a great job. First down at the 47. Big Peak was good for only about a yard. Do the Lions miss Doug English today? I bet they do. Well, I think he always miss a great player like English, but in spite of that, you know, I was going to say a minute ago, it's great to play at home, especially when you're involved in a race, but uh, I don't think the Detroit Lions are playing with nearly the enthusiasm and, and uh, animation that they played with when they played at home. Their fans generate a lot of enthusiasm. Houston ahead of Cleveland and New Orleans by four over the Eagles in the second quarter. Mike Fanning made that last tackle. And he's number 74 filling in for Doug English, second and nine. Ryder went out of bounds at the 20 yard line, another first down. He could have thrown to either Alexander. He looked there, and then he threw downfield. Yeah, they caught him in his own defense. There was a lot of room. The defensive backs were very deep. Watch, watch number 86. Kreider, watch, he breaks to the outside, and Alvin Hall is coming over to make the play from the deep safety position, but he gets over there too late, knocks him out of bounds, but they have good field position again, good protection against his own defense. It's tough for the uh, defenders to to follow them on this wet field. Well, the offense knows what they're going to do. The defense doesn't. They're afraid to slip, and that's what the problem is. Alexander outside, inside, and good for a couple to about the 18. We have 11 and a half left in the half. The Bengals lead 7 to nothing, and they're on the move now after the interception by Breeden. One turnover costs the Lions a touchdown, and the Bengals are trying to cash in on the interception. William Gay made that last tackle at the 18-yard line with the help of Gary Cobb. So far, the Bengals are controlling the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively. They've got to wake up Detroit and make something happen defensively if they're going to get back into this game and, and uh, do a good job. Curtis and Kreider are both to the left. Johnson knew he wouldn't get much. He put his head down, went to the 17, and Jimmy Williams ran into him with a very strong tackle and got the help he needed. One guy doesn't very often do that, but he did. Jimmy Williams, number 59, the right linebacker, got his shoulder pads in there in good shape and uh, wrapped his arms around it. And that's also very hard to do as big as he is. Third and six. Ten and a half, left and a half. Kreider's caught three passes, 48 yards. They got to hit a tight end here, Jack, or a back to where they're playing. A double zone defense if they throw the ball. Bursar is in there as the additional wide receiver. Oh, ball. Oh. Anderson picks it up and gets a first down. First and goal. He fumbled the ball and Cincinnati recovered it. Lapham got it back. Yep. Wasn't that a crazy play? They must have spent an awful lot of time in practice on that one, Jack. And Anderson is stretched out on the goal line. He's been hurt a few times this year, particularly with a bad neck and an injury he sustained in the Pittsburgh game. And then he hurt his hand, his left hand, against Pittsburgh last week. So he's really had his share of a lot of unfortunate things. Here you see him running up the middle, dropped the ball, picked it up. A missed tackle there. You can't tell who it is. Anderson tries to go through the pile, drops the ball, and uh, Dave Lapham, number 62, falls on the recovered fumble. Alvin Hall is the one who made the hit, and they have marked the ball down at the three-yard line after Lapham recovered the fumble, and Anderson isn't moving very much. Let's watch the tail end of that play again. He got sandwiched. Yes, he did. And Lapham had a good chance to blow the block, blow the right over the defensive back, but didn't. Dirk Schottert, number 15, will be coming into the game. And Anderson, they tried to uh, raise him to his feet a moment ago, and he ended up back in a sitting position. You hate to see anybody uh, stretched out for as long as he was. I don't think it's a neck problem, Hank. I'm only guessing, but it doesn't look like anybody hurt his neck. Maybe the knee did hit him in the head and knock his head back. 
he had a terrible whiplash when he was face masked in the uh, Steeler game. And Schoenert, by the way, has played quite a few games for the Bengals. You know, not many people, they remember the, the bad injury he got in the Pittsburgh game, but actually Anderson got hurt early in the season, had a neck problem, and uh, really has kind of had a problem with it all season long. Well, Kenny has to come off the field. This is his 13th year. And meanwhile, the Lions have their own problems here. They're trailing 7 0 with exactly 10 minutes left in the half. And it's first and goal at the three yard line for the Bengals. There goes Shorted into the game. He has just signed a long term contract with these Bengals. He has completed 63% of his passes, two touchdowns, four interceptions, sacked 13 times. And he's got enough work under his belt. And he's out of Stanford. That he ought to be able to do the job. And he's not a bad runner either. He's run 24 times for 103 yards and averages four point a carry. They don't like for him to run, but when he has to, he's done an excellent job. Well, how in the world do you stop Johnson down here? He already had one touchdown today. Looks like something right. Now, quarterback sneak. I shot He only got to the two yard line. That wasn't a very good idea, was it? I wouldn't think so. Not when you got a big guy like Johnson in the back of the way, 270. Johnson's probably saying to himself, what are you guys trying to do? Give me the ball. Well, he's trying to destroy the keys. <laughs> They'll Mike, give it to him here, I bet. Mike Fanning jammed it up along with Curtis Green. It's second and goal from the two. This would really, this would really be a good time for a play-action pass, Jack. Second and two, they'll be ganging in there tough on, on Johnson. Let's see if they do something like that. They're leaning to the left this time. Now they're going right with motion. Here they go. He ran right through Alvin Hall. You just can't stop him. Now Alvin Hall had a chance to get him earlier in the game. Couldn't do it. He did it again. They're picking on him, but he's big and strong. And a, and a defensive back like Alvin Hall has got no chance. He's 5'10", 193. They had a balanced try, but uh, no way. Watch Johnson emerge. And you talk about moving the pile. It looked like he was stopped. Look at this. He puts it in low drive and pops it right into the end zone. He's carried 11 times for 34 yards. Reach trying the extra point with 9.24 left in the half. We have a 14 to nothing score. 24 left in the half, and the Lions trying to clinch it today are in trouble. After the interception by Lewis Breeden, 12 plays, 74 yards, 5 minutes, 50 seconds, and Johnson's second touchdown of the day. Here is Breach to kick it off to Robbie Martin or Ken Jenkins, who is at the top of your screen. The referee is Jim Tunney. He says, let's have it. needed something big but they didn't get it it came out to the 28 yard line and Ray Griffin made the tackle next week CBS Sports brings you the final week of regular season action and some of you folks will see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers visiting the Detroit Lions or another big Central Division rivalry when the Packers visit the Bears and those of you in Columbus will see the Rams and Eric Dickerson in a Western Division battle that surely will have a lot of meaning and it all begins at 12.30 Eastern with the NFL today. That's next week. Now they open up with a double tight offense with one back and two receivers. Sims going left. Well, he waited and waited and waited and finally sprinted down the sideline for a few yards. Detroit in the turnover department. Early on the season, they were turning it over and uh, getting burned. Lately, they've been hanging on to it, but two touchdowns have followed a fumble and an interception. And you should also mix in an interference call in the end zone there to help tell the story. Sims has rushed for 38 yards. Other 49ers lead at Buffalo. Three to nothing in the second quarter. Eight carries, 38 yards for Billy. 
And they got two more. The Lions have definitely changed their personality offensively. They're going to a double tight end offense with a double wing. And what that does, really, that occupies every defensive player. It puts seven on seven, ties up the weak linebacker, who is normally the player away from the tight end. They make them all play football, and they're blowing off the ball and hoping they can make something happen with this kind of an attack. When you use an open end, a lot of the times the linebacker on the weak side, on the open end side, uh, runs free and creates a lot of problems. They're trying to eliminate that problem now. Reggie Williams and Tim Crumley made that last tackle. It's third and two. Thompson. He was very patient and got the first down across the 40-yard line. Out to the 44. Detroit has to be very businesslike in their approach to come back from this 14-point deficit, Hank. They can't go crazy trying to get it on. Well, they can't try. No, they can't try to get it all on one down, Jack. But I think they have to play with a lot more enthusiasm, a lot of more animation than they're playing so far. That they don't even look anything at all like the same team that we saw play in Detroit on a couple of occasions. They don't. They're not playing with with that kind of spirit at all. First down pass by Hippel. And that one was underthrown as he tried to get the ball to Chadwick again. Now Chadwick's quite a story out of Grand Valley State. And he's made the great the great in big style. He's watched the center of the Lions, Steve Mott, number 52. Here we see Mott snapping the ball back and then working on the pass protection. He's getting help from the right guard, Don Greco, and then he comes back. Watch him. And he's picking up another guy, number 69. He was busy, wasn't he? Yes, he was busy, and that's what you have to do in there. You have to do a good job of moving around and picking up the lead. Second down. And that one was to Nichols across midfield. Third and two and a half coming up. Ken Riley made the tackle. And another score for you. Buffalo has jumped out in front now in the second quarter. 7-3 over the 49ers. Those are two potential playoff teams. And we have 7-15 left in the half here. Third down. And two. Jones is in. He can catch the ball. Incomplete. A big hit on Nichols just as the ball touched his hands. He was whacked by the extra back, Ray Horton, number 20. And the Lions are going to have to kick the ball. Is there a flag down? Yeah, there is a flag. There's a flag. And it looks like it's again Cincinnati. Ball on the field. Cincinnati, five yards, makes it a first down. Twelve men on the field. What's well, no the wonder they had so many, all the receivers covered on the play. What's the limit? Well, I don't, I don't think they know. They're play, they played a Canadian play that time with 12 people. That's all right if you can get away with it, Jack, but they got caught. Illegal substitution, 12 men, 5 yards, but it does make it a first down. 12 men, 5 yards, first down, and they put the ball down at the 44 of the Bengals. Seattle, 11 ahead of the Giants in the second quarter, 14 to 3. We have 6.54 left in the half here. The Lions would like to get on the board. Here comes Billy. He turns it up. He's inside the 40. That was a good run. Six or seven yards. More like six. You know, both teams are featuring a lot of running on first and ten in the first, first quarter. The Cincinnati Bengals had the ball eight times on first and ten situations and only threw the ball three. Detroit had it nine times on first and ten situations and only threw two of nine. I think... As I mentioned earlier, Detroit must throw the ball more on first and ten, Jack. Second down and four. At the 39. Sims is very close to a first down. Very close to a first down. Let's see where they mark it. Run out by Cameron and Riley. Third down and a yard coming up. Billy Sims is really a great finisher. I'm talking when I when I say finisher, I mean a back who really runs low to the ground.
Brown when he's in traffic, heavy traffic, and gets the very most that he possibly can get out of a play. In fact, I talked to Hipple yesterday, and he says sometimes it's hard to get the ball in, there in his pocket, the receiving pocket, because he runs so low. Four-man rush for the Bengals, third down and one. Thompson leads Sims, and Billy gets the first down to the 31-yard line. He's having a busy day. What do you carry? 36 times one game this year? Yes, I think that was against the Green Bay Packers, if I'm not mistaken. And Hipple is not having a very good day as he tried to get that one to Robbie Martin, number 83. I don't want to belabor the point, but I still think that, uh, you know, when a player who is used to playing in a dome stadium has to go out and play in this kind of weather, it has to have an effect. It shouldn't have that much, but it does on a player that plays inside all the time. Sims has carried 12 times, 53 yards. Second and 10. 5.28 remaining in the half. 14 to nothing, Cincinnati. Well, the blitz was coming, and he unloaded very quickly. And the pass was incomplete as he tried to get it downfield to Norris, the tight end, or Martin. I don't know. It was Martin, I think. Yeah, Martin. I think it was Martin, Jack, and I think that's a sight control pattern whereby the quarterback and the receiver have to read the defense, and if it's a blitz, both of them have to react in sync to the blitz and throw inside. He threw the ball. It was a bad throw, but they knew what they had to do. They just not did not fulfill the execution part of the responsibility. Third and ten. Kipple is four out of 11. That's all with one picked off. Six defensive backs. They may throw the ball to Jones here, the fullback. Incomplete. He threw behind the receiver. Chadwick, and it's fourth down. Gary Burley, number 67, again got penetration. The one thing, one thing in a day like this for a quarterback that normally throws inside and practices inside. You have to be able to step and throw, Jack. Step and throw and follow through. He hasn't been able to do that, in all fairness to Eric Hipple. Four out of 12. Ed Murray, whose longest field goal of the year is 50 yards, is 19 out of 23 on the season. And he will kick it from 49 yards away. Hipple holding. They're going to get a different football. They start the day with 24 footballs. And they always have more on hand if needed on a day like this. You know, the thing about uh, Murray, he's kicked two for two from the 50 or more. Really amazing. High snap. Hipple got it down. And Murray hit the upright. Well, it's one of those days for Detroit. Hit the upright, and the score remains 14 to nothing in favor of the Bengals with 5.14 left in the half. And the ball goes over to Cincinnati at the line of scrimmage. Looked like he had it, and the ball drifted on. Yeah, he attacked the ball well and just sailed a little bit, hooked it a little bit to his left. Hit the upright. Right in the middle and bounced off. We have 5.14 left in the half. Cincinnati's on top. Well, at last, Detroit drive started at their 29. They were helped along the way with a penalty, but then missed the 49-yard field goal and still trail. We we get the word about Ken Anderson, who has given way to Turk Schoenert here. And Anderson was dinged only, and he could come back. And that's good news for Cincinnati. Schoenert's going to throw. First down run by the quarterback. He almost came up here into the booth. And Jimmy Williams, who was blitzing on the play, should have made the tackle, left his feet, tried to tackle him high. He went right underneath. Watch watch 59 on the left side of your picture here. Watch him. He's coming in. He got a free shot. He should have hit him right in the back. And misses. And uh, for that reason, Turk Schoenert was able to run up the field. And uh, I mentioned earlier, he does a good job and averages four point per run. He got 12 yards that time in the first down. The Cincinnati 42. 5.05 left in the half. Now the 
Alexander was hit first by Van Fantetti. A flag is down on the other side of the field. Harry Cobb finished off the play, number 53. That was kind of a wasted play on the part of Cincinnati, uh, Jack, because the defense was overloaded to the offensive right and uh, had one too many guys over there and shouldn't shouldn't have been able to run that play. They didn't. There's a penalty on the play along with it. Looks like the Lions are going to take the five yards. Jim Tenney, the referee, the umpire John Lineback, head linesman Sid Seaman. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Five yards is declined. Second down. So they turn it down. And second down and nine coming up. Exactly five minutes left in the half. Shoner, 6'1, 190 out of Stanford. Having a good year as a backup quarterback. Incomplete. Almost a very good catch by Curtis down around his ankles. Third and nine. Lions can't afford to get any further behind, can they? No, they can't. Although, you know, when you look at it realistically, when you say 14 points, it, it sounds like a lot of plays, a lot of points, but really it's just two plays away from being back in the game. Here's the score of another game for you. Look what Houston is doing to Cleveland in the second quarter, 24 to 6. A 93-yard kickoff return by Steve Brown for Houston. And Seattle leads the Giants 14 to 6. First contact, Fanning may have been drawn offside. We'll check and see. Detroit 74. Five yards. Against Detroit, that will make it third down and four. Mike Fanning is 6'6", 270. Played his collegiate football at Notre Dame. Was traded from the Los Angeles Rams to the Lions. I used to have a football camp at Cutcher's Country Club in New York when he was just a little kid in Oklahoma, and he was at our camp, and he was an excellent prospect even at that young age. Mike Fanning. Well, Cincinnati is out of the playoffs. There you see the penalties thus far in this game, and Detroit has to win either this one or their game next week against Tampa Bay in Pontiac in order to win the division crown. Not having a very good afternoon here. Third down coming up, third and three. No pressure now. There's pressure, and it is incomplete. This was Bursar reaching low to try to get it. Couldn't get it. And the Bengals will punt. So Detroit will have another time, and another chance, an ample time, 448 left in the half. Alvin Hall was defending on the play. That kind of a play, Jack, if you're not careful as a receiver, you bend your trunk, but you don't bend your knees. Had he bent his knees, he could have gotten down low enough to make that catch. Talking about David Bursar, who was 6'1", 200, played his collegiate football at Missouri. Here is the second kick by McAnally, and Robbie Martin waits back at his 15. And they blocked it. And Detroit has it. So there's the sort of play that could give them a big lift. Has the play been whistled dead yet or not? Coming away with the ball was Rick Rosano. Not Rosano, James Harrell. Harrell has the ball. And, and the block was made by McCall, the tight end. That's the kind of play that give them a big lift at the Bengal 41, Hank. Yeah, you have to make something happen from a specially team standpoint of your defense. Here's the shot. Now watch McNabb, watch him. He's got to catch the ball against his body, which takes a lot of time. And then the reset and try to reload and try to kick the ball takes an awful lot of time. It was a leak right inside, as you can see. And uh, Reese McCall, number 81, who was the guy who blocked the kick. And Harrell got it. That's the first one blocked against McAnally. All year long, the ball is at the 41. That's what happened to the Lions. They punted, fumbled, punted, had one picked off, and missed the field goal. They're at the Bengal 39. See if they throw here in first and 10. Yep, there they go. Hmm. Hippel was again a little bit off target as he tried to get the ball to Mark Nichols, covered by Lewis Breeden. 
throw it just a little bit behind that time. Play action, faking inside, and then stepping up and throwing the ball. Eric Hipple is 4 of 13. That's not good. Nope, 41 yards and one interception. But I tell you, the one thing about a good quarterback like Hipple, he won't stay cold very long. He, he might for a quarter or two, but he won't for four quarters. He shouldn't anyhow. Sims got down to the 36, third and seven coming up. Guy Frazier tackled at number 49 along with Bobby Kemp. And as I mentioned earlier, a quarterback on this kind of a day, especially one who doesn't throw outside that much, you have to give him enough room to step and throw and follow through because it's very important in this kind of turf that you get a good base. Third down and seven. And he hasn't had that kind of a base consistently all afternoon. James Jones is in the backfield for the Lions. They haven't thrown to him yet. Six defensive backs for the home team. They got a one-on-one -on, -one on this right the side. There it is. Incomplete. The ball went through the hands of the receiver, Scott. Fourth down, and Hipple ends up back at the 45. He was decked by that blitzer. They had what they wanted, a one-for-one -one situation. In the shotgun, watch it. He goes back, drops back. Uh, safety at uh, the cornerback, Breeden blitzing on the play, number 34. Had a good chance to make the reception, but just dropped the football again in heavy traffic. I wouldn't be surprised to see Detroit try something. There's Simmons, the safety man. I wouldn't be surprised to see him throw out of punt formation. We have 3.46 left in the half. And now the whistle and a flag, delay of game. The ball was at the 36, it'll be at the 41. Or there may have been a timeout. Correction. I think it was Detroit a timeout. Okay, Detroit has called timeout with 3.46 left in the half, and they avoided the penalty as a result. And that gives them a chance to talk things over. You expect any trickery from them? I think there's a possibility the field position is such where... Wouldn't hurt him too much. It wouldn't right? hurt him too much. No, it really wouldn't. I think they have to do something to get back in this game and make something happen. And Monty Clark in his sixth year. Well, this Saturday, CBS Sports will bring you another special edition of the National Football League. The Washington Redskins, who will have to continue to win, particularly if they win today, will host the Giants in their final for the postseason play, and it starts at 12 noon Eastern time. So the Giants against the Redskins, that's next Saturday on CBS. This afternoon and right after this game, the Redskins have traveled to Dallas. They'll play the Cowboys. Who do you like, Hank? I like Dallas uh, only because we've seen Washington play so many times. I like them very much, but I think synthetic turf and 20 door set could be the difference in their game later this afternoon. Yeah, the Redskins have told us they they like the grass. They don't they don't like the artificial surface. Aaron Black he is punting for the third time. You know, Black the first 10 weeks of the season a 47 punts, average at 43.3. Now, in the last four weeks, he had, he's averaged only 33.6. Cincinnati does not have a safety man back there as such. They're not going to allow Detroit to fool them in any way with 346 left. And now, here comes Murray, and he's going to try a field goal. A long one. 36-46. This will be his longest of the year. It will be 54 yards. He hit the upright a while back from 49 yards. As I mentioned to you, he's two for two for 50 plus. Let's see if he does try to kick it. There he is. A long, long one of 54 yards by Murray. And the Lions are on the board with 340 left in the half. There's Ed Murray. That's the longest field goal he has ever kicked, 54 yards. And it ties the Detroit Lion record. An amazing thing about it is he three for three from 50 plus. Isn't that something? And he hit the upright earlier and not to only a couple of minutes ago from 49 yards away. And he had to be very accurate to do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Murray will kick it off. Back deep for Cincinnati. 
We have twin safeties and they're guarding against the onside kick. The twin safeties are John Simmons and Rodney Tate. Tate is closest to us on the screen. 340 left in the half, 14 to 3, the Bengals lead. Yeah, and I never say uh, the word Detroit when I don't think of my old high school coach, Chuck Bear, who lives in Detroit and did such a great job uh, in Gary, Indiana, and also the University of Detroit. Super coach. This kick to Tate. Back from the goal line, he makes a bum decision. That wasn't very smart, but the way he was backpedaling and the coverage was already there and the tackle was made by Roosevelt Barnes. Next week, CBS Sports brings you the final week of regular action. Tampa Bay Buccaneers go to the Silver Dome in Pontiac for the game against the Lions, and if the Lions lose here, they'll have to win that one. And there's another Central Division rivalry. The Packers visit the Bears. And the Bears are winning today, as we saw. Those of you in Columbus will see the Rams and Eric Dickerson in their battle at New Orleans. It starts at 12.30 Eastern time with the NFL today. Let's see where the approach of the Bengals is with three and a half remaining in the half. And the ball at their nine. Two tight ends, Holman and Ross. Johnson just keeps those legs churning. 270 pounder finally finished off by Mike Fanny. And he got four yards, a couple of scores of other games for you. Buffalo by one point over the 49ers in the second quarter. And Seattle handling on the second quarter against the Giants. That game is in New York, actually in the Meadowlands. Four yards for Pete Johnson. If I were Cincinnati, I would let that clock run down to about five seconds. Take as much time as I possibly could. That's what they did. They stepped it at five. Out to Alexander. And he is close to a first down. We'll check it out. It apparently short by about a half a yard as McNorton ran him out with the help of Williams. Sideline markers all the way across the field. Let's see, did he get a first down or not? Schoener with a very safe pass, swinging that back out. Yeah, it's a good high percentage kind of a pass. You throw it out to the back, and he's uh, got a one-on-one -on -one situation with a linebacker. No telling how fast or how far he'll run. With the Cincinnati 18, two tight ends. They're without ML Harris in the Cincinnati lineup today. Johnson was taken down. Let's see, did he make it? I don't think so. Looks like his feet went out from under him for one of the few times. Fourth down. No gain on that one. And it is fourth down, and the Bengals will have to punt. Fantetti had very good penetration along with Todd. Now the two-minute warning will be coming up before anything else happens. And the Lions have two timeouts and the Bengals three. They don't want to use one of their timeouts here, so they'll let it wind down to two minutes and then send Robbie Martin back to get the punt. So the score is 14 to 3. Hey, they, didn't, they forgot to stop the clock. But they'll put it back to the two-minute mark. They'll put it back to the two-minute mark, and then McAnally will punt the ball to Martin. The preceding message was brought to you by the National Football League. Well, McAnally has had one punt blocked. Sometimes the kicker gets a little yippy when that happens to him. Yeah, he starts to count and look up front to make sure everything's faded, and he forgets the most important thing, and that is to first catch the ball and then kick it. The one thing you can't do is let the ball come against your body because it takes so much time to take it back out where you have to kick it, and a lot of times that can make the difference. Another high snap. Oh, what a good kick. What a beautiful punt. Martin fumbles it and falls on it smartly. That was a smart thing to do once he dropped it. Back at the 35-yard line. Let's see what Brent Musburger has up his sleeve. A 48-yard kick. Jack, the Bears have just struck again against the Vikings. Third and three. Play fake Suey. McMahon throws to the tight end, Emory Moorhead. 16-6. They miss the extra point. They lead by 10. Back to Jack. Both of those teams, 
the Bears and the Vikings are still in the hunt. Looks like we're going to go down to next week on a lot of these divisions. It certainly looks that way. It sure does. Meanwhile, the Lions are at their 35-yard line with 148 remaining in the half. They trail 14 to 3, and they have two timeouts left. Oh, bad snap. Oh, Cincinnati has. See, that's a mistake you make if you just don't fall in the ball, Jack. Eddie don't Edwards try, got it. Don't try to pick it up. Be satisfied to maintain possession of the ball. Fall on it. You still got the possession of the ball. You try to do that, you lose it. Now that there is a good chance that they will come up with another seven or three points. That's the third Lion turnover. Steve Mott snapped the ball too high. He almost had a signal for a fair catch on that one, Jack. It was that high. And now Hipple should have fallen on it right there. He picked it up, tried to run, and Edwards got it at the 17-yard line, their third turnover. Schoenert, the quarterback. Beat Johnson. Johnson went to the 15. The Bengals have three timeouts left. 134 left. And they let the clock run down. The tackle by Fantetti and Graham. And the Lions could be in bad shape here at the intermission. Clock running down. 115. Second down and eight. Alexander. Fantetti slowed him down. And he knocked down at the 14. It'll be third and seven. McNorton finished it off. Yeah, he came up there very good from his corner position, made the stop. And again, they ran away from the overshifted defense. The Detroit Lions were overshifted to their left. And uh, the Cincinnati Bengals did a good job of running away from the overload. Uh, even at that, they didn't make as much yardage as I thought they might. Bruce McNorton, number 29, making the play. This time out, charge to the Bengals. Each team has two left. Coming up at halftime, a preview of the Washington-Dallas game, which will follow right on the heels of this one. Brent and Herb will have scores and highlights, and as we have demonstrated to you in the first half, there are plenty of those. And some interesting results. We have a couple of scores that we'll give you before Brent and Herb do the job for you. Seattle at the halftime leads by 11 over the Giants, and in the second quarter, Cleveland coming back, but still trailing by 11. 24-13 in their game being played at Houston. There's our time left. 105 here in the half. If to admire these Bengals, they're playing tough even though they're out of it. Well, you know, talking to Forrest Gregg yesterday, that's all he talked about. He said, we've had a disappointing season, but I guarantee you, we're not going to be looking at young people. We're not worried about next year. We're just worrying about one thing. Winning the game tomorrow, and then after that, winning the next one. We want to win. And they're playing like that this afternoon. Their next game will be at Minnesota on Saturday, and the Bengals, if they win here today, will be trying for the 500 mark. That's important to any sports team. Versa goes to the right. Kreider to the left along with Curtis. Schoenert with a flag down, throwing end zone. Incomplete. Try to get it to Kreider. Let's check the flag. It was third and seven. Maurice Harvey, the extra back for the Lions, was covering. And a penalty. Well, what do you do? Do you turn it down and make him kick the field goal? Probably, right? Yep, I would think so. Be satisfied to come out of, come, come away with just three instead of the possibility of six. Dave Remington that time, you know, the offensive center, has really done a remarkable job as a rookie from Nebraska. 6'3", 288, number one draft choice this Illegal year. motion, 89, decline. Fourth down. The call against Dan Ross, the tight end, penalty declined, fourth down. And Forrest Gregg said yesterday about Remington, you know, now we've got him, we can run inside, we can run off tackle, we can run outside because he's really a snootful in the middle area. Really a great play. Breach is 15 out of 18, and inside the 40, he's perfect. This will be a 32-yard try. Kreider holding the ball. That's blocked. So the Lions have blocked a punt and now a field goal. And a loose ball. Who's got it? 
I think the fellow who got it came back in from out of bounds, and you can't do that. No, you can't. Cincinnati I, has. In most cases, the biggest guy in the bottom of that pile winds up with a football. It was Mike Cooper, we think, who got in and knocked the ball down. 42 seconds left in the half. Someone with their right arm. Boy, he got, there was good timing on the play. A good block got him hit, hit dropped the, the, knocked the ball down with his right arm. Can't tell who it was, but it was a good surge. Now watch this man that falls on. Well, it's going to belong to Detroit no matter. So it was blocked, and the Lions dodged the bullet and avoid three points. 42 seconds left in the half. Let's see if they try to strike deep. Maybe it was McCall who blocked his second kick of the day. We really didn't have a good enough picture. Nor did we see it at the outset when we watched it live. You got to be careful here. You don't make them another mistake and give them possession for another opportunity. That ball was thrown away for the most part. Yes, it was, and very wisely so. Griffin was covering. Billy Sims, the intended receiver, 35 seconds left in the half. But as I mentioned, Jack, you've got to be very careful with 35 seconds because you don't make some kind of a mistake offensively and give them another opportunity to get good field position and have an opportunity to strike again before the half. 14 to 3 of the score. Bengals lead. And play is short of a first down as Chadwick caught it at the 30. Tackled by Ray Griffin. The Bengals are without Archie Griffin, without M.L. Harris, and Chris Collinsworth hasn't played today. Timeout called by the Lions with 20 seconds left in the half. It blew a few seconds there, uh, trying to make a decision to make the call, the timeout call, Jack. Next Saturday, immediately following that giant redskin game we told you about on CBS Sports will have collegiate basketball. Louisville against the defending national champs, North Carolina State. They're seven and one. And off to a very good start. Jim Valpano, the coach, and he has some of last year's heroes back, including Lorenzo Charles and Kazel McQueen and a newcomer, Spud Webb. They say he's something to watch. Join Gary Bender and Billy Packer for the action. 345 Eastern Time. That's Saturday following the giant Redskin game. Timeout slot. Detroit one. Bengals two. 20 seconds on the clock. Turnovers is, have hurt Detroit. They've turned it over three times. And they've led to a couple of Cincinnati touchdowns. The rain has all but stopped here, but the field will be wet for the rest of the day. We get a good look at number 70, Keith Dorney. What a good one he is. Yeah, he really is a great offensive tackle. He's big and he's strong. And he gets the job done. A good run blocker and a good pass blocker. 6'5", 265, number one draft choice from Penn State. Third and two. Pippa likes to run. He wants to get out of bounds. He already has the first down. 12 seconds left in the half. First down run by Hippel. 12 seconds remain. And you're right, you put your finger on it early. We've seen Detroit frequently in recent days, Thanksgiving, the Monday night game, and other games. They're not playing with the, uh, the same vitality today that they played previously. Maybe that home crowd helps them that much. It really does. They look like a totally different team at home than they do away from home in this particular game. Ball is at the Lion 42. First out. Three wide receivers to the right side. Nichols, Scott, Chadwick. Only a three-man rush. That's a jump ball, isn't it? Anybody have it? Yeah, Detroit. Yeah, Detroit has it. Inside the 20. And a first down with three seconds left. Well, they could get a field goal out of it. Chadwick caught it. How'd he do it? With his hands, Jack. With his hands. But he ran. He made a great catch. He really made a great catch. I don't think it was Chadwick. I couldn't tell. Yeah, maybe. I think it was. Was yeah. it? Yeah, it Chadwick caught it at the 19. He threw it up there, and that's what happens when you take a chance. You know, when you throw it up there, that's a big pen, big bend play. 
Look at that, three defensive players around the ball, and in spite of that, he was able to leap up on top and make the catch. Who Sensational. Was? Who caught it? I still can't see who got it. Don't see the number. Well, don't you believe me? Uh, not until I see the number. <laughs> Chadwick caught it at the 19, and Murray, who is one for two today, will try a 37-yard field goal. He hit from 54 yards, high snap, Hipple got it down. Murray gives the Lions. Well, that was a, a miraculous three points that they got, all things considered. Makes the score 14 to six at the half. So, Chadwick set it up, and Murray took advantage of it. A 37-yard boot. You know, that's the nice thing about Chadwick. He's 6'3", 185, leaping up with those small defensive backs. He was able to make the catch. Was he the one? Yes, he was. <laughs> Cincinnati leading 14-6. And that Murray has given Detroit all of their points. We'll check the standings again and reiterate why this game is so important to the Lions. They either have to win today or next week to win their Central Division title the first since 1957 Green Bay doesn't play till Monday and meanwhile Minnesota and Chicago are still very much in the race and uh, Chicago's leading in that one 16 to 6 at the half so it's a uh, an eight-point lead for the Bengals the rain has all but stopped and we turn things over to Brent Musburger Well, welcome back to New York. I'm Brent Musburger with Irv Cross. And Irv, I'll tell you, the Lions are creeping back into this game right now. It is 14-6. As you know, the Bengals had built up a two-touchdown lead, and they went to the... That's not the big cat in Cincinnati. The big cat is this fullback here, Pete Johnson. And you know, Irv, in this next sequence, that was some blow that Anderson took to the head when he turned loose here. Everybody was really concerned. Of course, Monty Clark trying to get his defense going, but watch this. The botch handoff. Anderson scoops the ball up. He's an excellent runner, but remember, he's had problems with neck injuries all year. He goes down there after he's hit, went out with an injury. As far as we know, it's not very serious, though, friend. Kirk Schoenert has to know just one play down here, Irv. Huh, yeah, hand the ball off to Pete Johnson. The big battering ram forces away in the end zone. He just can't stop him. But I think the Lions have got a chance the second half of that game after those two Eddie Murray field goals. Only 14-6. Now the Chicago Bears are leading the Vikings 16-6. Mike Ditka has not done a good job calling the plays for the Bears, but today he's had some imagination. Now this first pass cannot be forward. It's got to be a lateral. Now watch Zoe camouflage it. I'm going to tell you, Walter Payton is just standing out there by himself. That fooled everybody on the Viking defense. 74 yards for the touchdown. And Irv, that fair defense, they could really beat up on a quarterback. Well, I tell you, they can. They came into the game with 43 sacks. He picked up two more in the first half. Here's one right there. Richard Dent getting the sack. This was a first and goal from the two. You didn't expect him to be throwing, but McMahon went to Emory Moorhead. 16-6 is the score. Now, the Bears missed an extra point, and sitting on 10 rather than 11, could turn out to be very important when they go down the stretch in that ball game. Seattle and the Giants. The Giants are being pounded by the Seahawks 17-6. Jimmy the Greek reported in our pregame show that the Giants are interested in hiring Miami Hurricane coach Howard Schnellenberger at the end of this season. New Orleans and Philadelphia, and of course for the Bears to have any chance at all, the Saints must lose this game to the Eagles. Now the Eagles brought back Wilbert Montgomery, but he has been unable to spark the offense so far today. Bum Phillips, of course, has one of the finest defenses in the league. And that team has just gone ahead 14-3. They are in the third quarter. They are playing in Philadelphia. The weather over there, well, it is not too bad. No rain, no snow. And elsewhere around the league, Cleveland and Houston, this is the biggest surprise. The Oilers are dominating the Browns. It is 24-3. Mike Pruitt fumbled twice for the Browns. And for the Browns to have any chance to win the division, they would have to win this game big and next week against Pittsburgh big. And instead, they could lose the whole thing to the Oilers and find themselves out of the playoffs. San Francisco and Buffalo, big game for both of these teams. And at the half, well, what is that right there? Those are Polaroid photos taken of the San Francisco secondary. But this was the big play for Joe Ferguson, who was studying those photos. Just turned Joe Cribbs loose, and Cribbs moved 45 yards. The longest Bills run of this year, and has set up this player. Easy touchdown for Roosevelt Leaks over the top, and the Bills have a halftime lead. All right, Irv, we'll show everybody now the second New Orleans touchdown that they just popped in minutes ago. And it was George Rogers following a beautiful block there by Wilson. 
And your Eagle defense didn't seal that up too well. Well, look, they're playing pretty good football overall, though. Brent, we have another quarter and a half yet to go. Coming up now, we'll take a look at the game when the NFL Today continues after these messages from your local stations. <laughs> Still ahead of us on CBS, the game. That's all I have to say. Washington against Dallas. Texas Stadium already starting to fill up, and I'm surrounded by a pair of experts now to analyze that action for you. Nice to have the coach, Dick Vermeil, with us Thank here you. in New York. And Jimmy the Greek, of course, we've been waiting all week to see who you're going to pick. The weather is beautiful. Are we in for a high-scoring or a low-scoring game? I imagine about three touchdowns for each team and a field goal late, but I'll tell you later by whom. All right, let's put Dick on the spot right. first. Dick, who do you like to win this game? Brent, I like the Redskins, and the reason I like them, they've played more consistently up to their ability each time I've seen them. They have always played good football. Let's take the folks inside and show them some of the reasons why you like the Redskins. How about number 72, Dexter Manley? Well, Dexter Manley is their best upfield rusher, and Pat Dunneman, number 67 today, is going to have his hands full. Now, at the top of your screen, you're going to see Pat Dunneman, the left tackle, number 67, pass protecting Dexter Manley. And he is capable of pass protecting him, but he's going to get deep into the backfield and force that quarterback to step up into those big defensive tackles. Dick, do they work a lot of tricks with Manley and try to loop him through the middle still? Oh, they do. They do a lot of stunning, like all teams do, but that won't be the key. The key will be the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Match Irv Cross took that close look at the Hogs, the Washington's offensive line in the pregame show. What kind of blocking do they favor to open a hole for a John Riggins? Well, first off, they're big and physical, all offensive tackles, and they come off together real well, knocking people out of there. But they also co-op block better. Now, you watch the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, number 53, Jeff Bostic, the center, and Russ Grimm coming off on Randy White at the left of your screen, 54. Now you see Russ Grimm coming off on Bob Brunig, number 53. A combination, combination block executed. Here comes Riggins going to squirt through the hole that Bob Brunig, number 53, was supposed to get to. Now it's turned loose on a safety, and Riggins on a safety is a mismatch. Dick, of course, the Cowboys have that awesome defensive line. What's the one matchup today that could really get the Redskins in trouble? Well, whenever you have to block too tall with one guy, it's going to be a problem. And George Stark, number 74, right in the middle of the screen, is going to have some problems physically. I think he can pass protect him, but he's going to get penetration. And now that six foot eight guy gets up in the air. He's like throwing over a telephone pole. But still and all, even down there in Texas, you think the Redskins are going to prevail? I think they can beat him. All right. Jimmy, do you agree with the coach? I agree what he said about that young man on the outside, too tall Jones, of what he's going to do. I'll tell you, all coaches, Brent, pick pick the Redskins, 14 of them. You know, they're the pure team. They tackle, they block, they play straight football. Dallas, of course, flexes a little bit, you know, goes around in, throws a flea flicker. I mean, they try to trick you. Now, I'll tell you this, this quarterback and special teams definitely go to the Redskins, but the speed, Dorsett has more speed and he'll break the team quicker. I mean, he'll make a longer gain than Riggins will. That defensive line of the Redskins, has, or rather of the Cowboys, has a better pass rush. And there isn't any question in my mind about that because two tall is super. And I'll tell you, that home advantage today is going to be big because they're going to be yelling Texas loud today. That Cowboy's going to win this one big, Greg? No, but they're going to win it. Now, you took that dinner on this? Do I get to come along? Well, he's already volunteered to buy dinner. <laughs> All right. Still ahead of us, the game. But right now, we've got the second half coming up. So let's send you back to the stadium. All of the Bengals are out there on the field as Ken Riley is being honored here at halftime. This may be his final year as an active player in the NFL. During an outstanding career in the National Football League, a much underrated Ken Riley intercepted 63 passes. He has a half a dozen this year. He just went by Dick LeBeau, Paul Krause, the most ever 81, Emlyn Tunnell 70, and then Dick Knight Train Lane, as we told you, that was uh, next in line with 68. And Hank Stram, Ken's coach from Florida A&M, Jake Gaither is out there standing to the left of Ken Riley along with uh, Mrs. Gaither. Yeah, it's good to see him. I saw him uh, a little bit before the game with Paul Brown, and he did a remarkable job at Texas, or uh, at the Florida A&M. And uh, he used to be the Hubba Hubba coach. That's what they called him, the Hubba Hubba. So a nice silver service and a trophy being presented. Isaac wow, Curtis. Back Cincinnati Bengals, 1969, 1983. 
a player's player, a coach's player, whose character and dedication to excellence has made him a true professional. From your 1983 teammates and coaches. We must reiterate that it is still not definite that this will be the last year for Ken Riley, but everybody is assuming that it Thanks, will be Zach, because of the way he has talked Ken in the Riley. past. And the that other thing, there's a lot of speculation, Jack, that he might play in the new league in Tampa. He only lives 40 miles away, and they talk about the possibility of his being a player coach for that team. I think for those of you well, there's a fellow who never made the Pro Bowl and look at all the interceptions he has and that's something 63 and all of us yeah that's remarkable him, we'll remember him just as much if not more so as Ken Riley the man Kenny well the fans here at Riverfront Stadium and his teammates applaud Ken Riley I'd just like to say I'm very appreciative of this day, Ken Riley Day. I'd like to thank the entire Bingham management, Coach Brown, the staff. I'd like to thank Coach Greg, the coaching staff, my teammates, and especially you, the fans. Right. Yeah. I would also like to pay a tribute to my college coach who was instrumental in my early development. He was a great man, and I learned a lot from him. I'd like to thank all of my family here who were able to make it. And I must say that this is Ken Riley's last year at the Cincinnati Bingo. I will officially retire next week. That's the first time never, he has said that, folks. Never, ever forget the experiences, the dedication, the loyalty as being a member of the Cincinnati Bengals. And I hope this year, that we will finish up as the number one defensive team in the NFL. So you see what these Bengals are shooting for, and that's why the Again, Lions have their hands full here thing. today. And farewell. Farewell, he said. That's always sad, Hank. Huh? Yeah, it really is. Anytime you see a great player like Ken Riley, and as he, as they mentioned, he was not only a great player, but a great person as well. It's always a sad moment in sports when you hear an outstanding performer, any performer, no matter what his accomplishments, say farewell to the game. And this was the 15th year for Ken Riley out of Florida A&M, and he was honored by the Bengals here this afternoon. Meanwhile, the Bengals are handling the Lions 14 to 6 here at the halftime. That's where Riley stands with regard to introductions. I don't think anybody's ever going to catch Paul Krause. I don't think so. And Dick LeBeau, who is his defensive backfield coach, he passed him by 163. And he's had, he's done a very outstanding coaching a job of coaching Ken Riley. And Riley gives him an awful lot of credit for the great things he's done the last few years. And of course, the folks in uh, Detroit remember Dick LeBeau very well. Oh, he was one of their super players. As well as Night Train Lane. We're just checking a score here, Hank. We have a 16-13 third quarter lead by the Chicago Bears in their game against Minnesota. Looks like we're going to get down to the final week on some of this, unless the Lions come back here today and resolve all of the problems. Well, the Lions, you know, the, it kind of looks bleak, but they're still only two plays out of coming back and taking control of this game. So they got anything little, can happen. They got a little left by the extra three points they got toward the uh, tail end of the half. And I think they had to come back in the second half and play with a lot more animation, a lot more enthusiasm. They got to make something happen, and they're capable of doing that. They've blocked two kicks here today, and that's made a difference. And we mentioned again Chicago over Minnesota, 16 13, third quarter. And here is Ed Murray to kick it off. He's given this club a, list, a lift. And back is uh, Simmons, along with Ray Horton. The ball blew off the kicking tee. The rain has not stopped completely. It has abated quite a bit. Simmons is at the top of your screen, and Horton is closest to you. This will be returned by Horton from the five-yard line. Couldn't stand that, could they? James Harrell made the tackle. At 
at the Detroit 45. From the five to the Detroit 45, a 50-yard return. That's the one thing you don't want to have happen if you were Detroit. Uh, they did not cover the kick very well at all, which is obvious. It was a lane. He took advantage of it. Boy, he really scooted through there in great shape. Horton's only a rookie. Yeah, he's from Washington, 5'10", 189. Has five interceptions. So Schonert is the quarterback. And this is Stanley Wilson, whom we're seeing for the first time. Gary Cobb made the tackle. Number 32 is Wilson. He's been out with an injury. This fellow is going to be a good back someday. Yeah, he's 5'10", 210. A rookie from Oklahoma has carried the ball 51 times for 252 yards and a 4.9 average. He makes it happen. Drafted ninth in 1983. He just got two yards. Wilson on a wing. And look at Johnson. Very close to a first down near the Detroit 35-yard line. And in fact, it is a first down as they mark the ball. Curtis Green, the tackler. Boy, the Bengals are doing a good job of knocking people off the line of scrimmage. Remington that time. Yes, he did have made a very good block. Dave Remington, Max Montoya, Mike Wilson. Boy, they're making things happen up front. Lions have to stop this drive. They're trailing 14 to 6. Shown it in place of Anderson. It was dinged in the first half, but is capable of coming back if need be. Fumble. And how's that for a break for Detroit? Fantetti pulled the ball in. Now he had it for a moment. Whether he came away with it or not, I don't know. Somebody else is on the bottom. And the Bengals say they have it back. Yep, looks like they have it back. Detroit had it for a moment, but it got away on that wet turf. And it'll be second down. Lapham recovered his second fumble of the day, number 62. We have four scores of other games, four scores and several, several years ago. New Orleans leading the Eagles in the fourth quarter, 14 to three. Chicago in the third quarter by three over Minnesota. Buffalo by three, uh, trailing by three as the 49ers play at Buffalo, and Houston still has the lead over Cleveland. Second and 11. That ball was caught by Dan Ross, the tight end, at the 12-yard line. You talk about great anticipation. Catch. Try to get some help from Hall from the backside number 35, but couldn't jar it loose. He got up over the top of Hall to make the catch at the 12. Stanley Wilson. And a very good play by the cornerback Watkins, number 27. They tell us that Watkins is the best in that defensive backfield of the Lions, and he made a dandy tackle that time. Yes, he did, and he comes in with four interceptions, and Bruce McNorton with six. Two corners are doing an excellent job. Schoenert looking to the sideline to get the next play. And Monty Clark said that Mel Phillips has really done a super job with these young defensive backs. That's what Schoenert has done since taking over for Anderson. The ball is at the 10, second and eight. Lions made something that time with Fantetti blitzing and not missing. Back at the 20-yard line. The timing of the blitz was perfect by Fantetti that time. Watch him come through. Here's an end zone shot. Watch 57 come through. Takes a course on the outside of Lapham. Nobody touches him. He keep, keeps both feet on the ground. Good tackling position and makes the sack. Ken Fantetti, number 57. Third and 17 at the 19. Third down. Extra defensive back, Maurice Harvey. They haven't run many draws at all as much as they here they go outside again. Johnson ran to the 10, and that'll make it fourth down and eight and bring the field goal team on. I would surmise Harvey ran him out of bounds, number 23. Johnson to the Lion 10. Well, they blocked two kicks today, one punt, one field goal. And they'll be coming after this one. 
Breach will attempt it. He's 15 out of 19 on the year. Johnson has rushed for 62 yards on 17 carries. Reese McCall has been doing most of the damage on the block kicks. 28 yard try. Strider holding the ball. That is good. We have 11 minutes left in the third quarter. 17 to 6. From left to right, Monty Clark, Ted Marchabrota, number 16, Gary Danielson, wondering if he's going to come in. Hipple is 7 out of 18. And we'll see if the Lions make a change. Well, that 50 yard kickoff return led to three points. Here's a split kick taken by one of the up men and across to the 35 yard line for the Lions goes Larry Lee, the guard. And it is Gary Danielson at quarterback. Well, what do you think of that, Mr. Stram? I think you have to do something to get your, your, your football team back in in sync and this might get it done you got to make a change when one is cold you got to make a change and they're doing it Danielson there you see 53 percent six touchdowns four intercepted he's been sacked six times as Billy Sims tosses to Bill A one yard that's all good tackle by Reggie Williams number 57 he maintained good outside leverage, talking about Reggie Williams, a right linebacker. He was not able to, they could not hook him, and he was right there to make the play. Cincinnati, number one in the NFL, total defense, and number one against the rush. There's nothing wrong with Hippo, it's just Monty Clark trying to get a little change up, a change of pace, find a hot quarterback. First throw by Danielson. sack for a big loss by Jim LeClaire, number 55. Another blitz. Jim LeClaire, number 55, the left linebacker. Watch him come into the picture. There you see him go through the block. Comes around the outside. Vince Thompson was trying to block him, didn't stay with him. Went around, around the outside, the backside of the quarterback, and made the, made the sack. Third down and 19, second sack against the Lions today. Out of the shotgun. Remember the bad snap earlier. Blitz again. Well, that's a shame as Sims, or Jones, couldn't keep his balance. And he came up short of the first down by about three yards. James Jones, a rookie from Florida, he's had some bad ribs but he's been playing today Reggie Williams brought him down and he came into the game with 40 catches which is very unusual for a young back they tell us he's college. very aware of, of where the defense is yeah they like him very very much Simmons is back to get the punt from black Mike black Simmons took it on the 25. Knocked down near the 30-yard line. Now the Bengals have got a field goal the last time they had the ball. Get it once more. Well, we're happy to see the number 14 there. Kenny Anderson is well walking around. He could play if need be, but Shorter is the quarterback from his own 30. Stanley Wilson. You got about four or five. The thing about the Bengals when they get ahead of you and they lead now 17 to 6 with a good ground game with Johnson and in this case Wilson, they can keep the ball away from you. Yeah, they just move the chains. They just worry about making first downs and uh, they keep the ball away from you. Keep your offense, the opposition, opposing team's offense on the sideline and uh, boy, they're hard to get the ball back from. Second down and six at the 34. Isaac Curtis comes to the left. He hasn't done much today. And thrown the ball to him. Kreider placing him, playing in place of Collins. Worth it to the right. 
Johnson. And people just bounce off him. There goes the flag. As Johnson is tackled for a loss by Jimmy Williams. You got to get him low, don't you, Henry? Yeah, you got to get him low. You got to tackle him below the knees. He's so strong upstairs. And he's so big around the middle, you can't get your arms around. Here's a penalty against Cincinnati. Mike Brown made a cute remark. I said, what about Johnson? He said, well, he used to be our horse. Now he's two horses. <laughs> That's the <laughs> Weighing son. 270. That's the son of Paul Brown, the general manager. Yeah, he said, now he's two horses. Jim Tunney is telling him, if you turn the uh, penalty down, it will be third down and long, third and ten. Well, they you to the hand, number 62, decline. Third down. Okay, it's third down now, third down and ten. Well, let's see if the Lions can make something happen on this big play. Maurice Harvey checks in defensively. Four-man rush. Incomplete. Boy, that was good timing. That was good timing. Kreider covered by Hall, and he was lucky that he didn't get a flag. He really was, but the anticipation of the flight of the ball was excellent on the part of Alvin Hall. He really made a super play. But eight and a half left in the third quarter. Watch Cobb. Watch Cobb give, give the official a little shot. Oh, <laughs> He says, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, didn't see him. He was in the way. He nailed the umpire, Jim Leinbach. Those umpires take a beating during the course of the year. Pat McAnally punting. Martin took it at the 28. And that's where they nailed it. Good coverage. And John Simmons, number 25, got downfield to make the tackle after that 42-yard punt at the 28. Well, there's the story here. 8-17 left in the third quarter. And the Lions have to get perky. Here's the reverse, a fake reverse, and Sims keeps the ball. And he is, well, he didn't get a first down. First down run by Billy Sims on the fake reverse. The Lions use that reverse frequently. It worked very well. He fakes it. Watch. They pitch the ball to Billy Sims going to his left. He fakes the ball to the receiver going around the right side. And really, had he given the ball to the receiver, he had, he had a lot of running room, although Billy did a good job of running and made the first down. But uh, that keeps the defense honest. The ball is at the Lion, 38-yard line. 17-6, to six, the Bengals lead. Thompson in the backfield with Sims. Williams, the linebacker, forced it. And Thompson got very little. Reggie okay. Williams was there, number 57. There's scores of other games for you to digest. New Orleans by seven in the fourth quarter. The Eagles have come back a bit. San Francisco by 10 over Buffalo there in the third quarter. Seattle comfortable, 17 to nine in the third quarter over the Giants. And Cleveland, having trailed throughout most of the game, goes ahead by three in the third quarter. Nate Stram mentioned to me, he thought Houston could knock him off today. Well, that's a great comeback on the part of Cleveland, though. Second down and nine. This is Danielson. And the pass was thrown behind the intended receiver. You know, one thing uh, on this kind of terrain, look at all the puddles on the right side of the 50-yard line to our right. You have to make sure that you stay away from those areas because it's so slippery and so slick. You try to make a turn in that area, you're out of business. There's a good shot of it, and that's where they just tried to run the pattern that time. And he put his foot in the puddle and slipped. You got to be aware of where those puddles are and throw the ball to Corbin. Third down and nine. Nichols couldn't catch that last one. Six defensive backs. The blitz is on. The ball is aired out and incomplete. They were hoping that Scott could run underneath it, but he couldn't. And Detroit will have to punt, and Danielson is just like Hipple today. Can't get hot. Yeah, it's funny how that works. You know, you go along and and you can't uh, hit the side of a building. But again, I don't think that the good quarterbacks or the good running backs are going to be stopped consistently for four quarters. Somewhere along the line, 
they're going to get hot and start to make things happen. At least that's what usually happens. Mike Black will punt to John Simmons, who is at his 20. 7.22 left in the third quarter. A line drive kick. Simmons took it on the 20-yard line. Lots of lines there. Well, Lions can't get on track, and the Bengals have the ball again. Hank Stram and Jack Buck with you. 7-10 left in the third quarter. It started to rain a little more heavily. Bengals have the ball at their 21-yard line, and there's the score, 17-6. I mentioned this earlier, but Detroit, to get back in this game, they have to do something with their specialty teams and also their defense to make something happen and reduce the size of the field so they can get back in this game. A keeper by Schoenert. Tight end Van Ross is out to the 40-yard line. Well, Schoenert could have run or passed. That's how wide open that was. Well, you know, the success of that play was based on the fact that the weak side of the formation sold out it made it, watch the left side, the left guard and the left tackle, look at there. They go like they're going to the right side. The defensive people react to that, and as a result, he gets outside of containment. Ross is wide open because everybody was going the other way. Really an excellent call by the coaches on the sideline. And a good job by Coper as Mike chased him down after somewhat holding his ground. The ball at the 40. Stanley Wilson got five. It's the thing about the Bengals, as we told you a while ago. They can hang on to the ball for good periods of time. Alvin Hall, the tackler, number 35. And the Lions, the other thing they have to do, they have to try everything they possibly can to scrape the ball loose. Make you got to make something happen. Get a fumble. Do something. You just can't be satisfied to tackle a guy. You got to try to scrape the ball loose along with it. Five, five, five left in the third quarter. Second down and five. Look at all the time. And he bumps it. Incomplete. Third down. They had time, but nobody could shake loose. Yeah, they had an overshifted defense that time. Overshifted, meaning they moved a man over, one more man over to the left side of the formation. And uh, they had no rush whatsoever. He had all the time in the world to throw the ball and throw it into the dirt. He's four out of nine now, as you see, after taking over for Ken Anderson. Third and five. the Lions have to show for their day's work is six points. Third down and five for Cincinnati. There's a blitz. That's McNaughton, seventh of the year. That's what you're talking about, Hank. They get the ball at their 42-yard line. Yeah, that's what that's what they have to do, the way they're playing. And actually what happens in this kind of a game, Jack, you have to win two out of the three battles to win the war. If you win your with especially teams, or the it doesn't mean you earn as long as you win two out of three. You usually win. Good pressure that time. He tried to anticipate the inside move. That was one of those I I thought patterns, Jack. He thought he was going to go inside, but he went outside and threw the interception. The second interception by the Lions. McNorton, earlier it was Cobb, and they had the ball at their 42. With Danielson. And he hit the rookie, Chadwick. And a first down pickup, and Danielson finally gets on the board with a completion. Jeff Reedy made a great move. He went right down at Riley and drove him back. Riley has a tendency to turn his knees to the inside. Let's see if we can see this in a replay. Watch Chadwick come off the ball. Now watch, watch Riley turn inside. He stops, slips. The ball is thrown in good shape right at the numbers. He makes the catch. Good looking execution. Thompson and Sims. First down pass. And a heavy traffic, but caught nonetheless for another. First down, this one inside the 30-yard line. Now they say no. Incomplete. Mark Nichols had it, dropped it. He looked like he dropped it on the way down, Jack. He had it, looked like momentarily, but dropped it. Lucky that one wasn't picked off. Those kind can be. 
Watch, he's curling inside the zone. And uh, the defensive back did exactly what we talked about a moment ago. Lewis Breed, he just scraped the ball loose on the way through. Chadwick has caught four for 78 yards. The Lions haven't made much use of their tight ends today in the throwing department. And that time a flag goes down as Norris tried to catch it. And Norris is tough to cover, big as he is, 6'4", 232. Who's it against? LeClaire was covering the tight end. And a holding call against Cincinnati. It might have been on the tight end. In the fourth quarter, the Bears lead Minnesota 16-13. Now they're... Let's watch the hit. Meanwhile, they're marking off the yards, and it'll be an automatic first down. Watch. Now he had watch. his arm around it. Yeah, he did. He surely did. Holding 55, five yard, first down. Jim five, LeClaire. Five yard holding penalty puts the ball down at the Bengal 36. I think the other thing he has to do a little bit more of, Jack, he's got to move the pocket a little bit to keep the defense off balance. Sims is smothered right at the line of scrimmage. Well, he got a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Leclerc, number 55, just called on the penalty, led the defensive charge. You don't get the impression that they're keying on Billy no, Sims not very much, much, do you? No. <laughs> not much. Here's a score for you. The Houston has caught the Browns. 27 all in the third quarter. Boy, what a great comeback that is on the part of uh, the Cleveland Browns. That game is at Houston. Second and eight. And Daniels was, Danielson was off target as he tried to hit his big tight end, Ulysses Norris. And Vince, and, eight. and Vince Thompson was wide open in the flat, number 38. He did not see him. The tight end was also open, but he uh, just dropped the ball. But uh, Thompson, 38, was wide open. Third down and eight for the Lions, who trailed 17 to six. This drive started off in very good fashion. It sputtered a little bit, and it is third and eight. We've got a chance on the left side. Looks like it's one for one coverage with either a back or a receiver. Uh-oh, here we go. Danielson tried to get the first down, and he may have. He knew how far he had to go. He got it. Well, let's see. I may have been a little quick with it. Let's see where they mark it down. I'm guessing that he made it. They have to bring the sideline marker all the way over. Guy Frazier, the linebacker, made the tackle, number 49. What do you think, folks? In any event, the Lions are going to have to go for it if they're short. They don't want to wait till next week, Hank. No, they can't. They just got to do it now. When you play a football game that you simply have to win, brother, it's tough to do it. Well, another first down for Detroit. I know the... I know the people at Divine Child High School in Dearborn are very, very proud of these two players, Gary Danielson and also Jeff Chadwick, both of whom played at this fine high school. First down at the Bengal 26-yard line. You ought to write a social call. <laughs> Pretty good drive now by the Lions. They still have time on that 30-second clock, so Danielson's pretty cool about it. Too many people. Too many people on Billy Sims. We've seen Sims throw the ball in the past. Something like that may catch the Bengals, Hank. Tackled yep. by Glenn... Collins. As aggressive as they're playing, Jack, you have to run some draws, traps, screens, and run at the defense. Uh, you know, they just haven't had any success at all running sideways east and west, especially with the field the way it is. I think when you run, you got to go at them, and then you got to draw a screen and throw the ball. 2.50 left in the third quarter. Second and 10. That's a first down. I thought I'd see a flag come. I thought Cincinnati was offside, but the ball was caught by Nichols. 
Tackled by Kemp and another first down, and Detroit's on the move. Yeah, the key that time was that Mark Nichols made the catch and brought it right into his body so he could maintain good possession of it. He took a couple of good hits there, but he had good control of the ball, which is so important. The ball's at the Bengal 11. Oh, look at there. The Eagles have caught New Orleans in the fourth quarter, 17 all. And that game is tied in the fourth quarter. Cleveland and Houston. First down at the 11. Sims kept driving, and he got about four yards before he was driven back. Yeah, went right over the left guard that time, Homer Elias, who they call Honey Bear. And uh, they got some good movement that time, and that's a lot better than trying to go sideways. It was Fraser and LeClaire, the linebackers, stopping Sims. And they're going to put the ball down at the, what? Well, he really got some drive. He got down to the six-yard line. He got five yards. Yeah, and Homer Elias, they, they call him Sugar Bear instead of Honey Bear. No, it was some kind of a bear. Second down and five. Well, look at all the room over the right guard. Sims got inside the five behind the block of Larry Lee, number 64, the guard, right guard who had pulled. And the Lions are knocking at the door. Boryarski and Williams were the Cincinnati defenders. They put the ball down inside the four-yard line, third down coming up. Just like throwing marshmallows at a battleship, trying to go outside in it. They really respond very well. They're doing a good job. And they've been trying Defense it all day. Yeah, they keep going after it. Third and three. Balls at the four. Jones is in the backfield. Danielson picked it up, and then the center landed right on top of it. Isn't that amazing? The that's the second. Driven right back into it. Yeah, they rammed it right back into the quarterback. That's the second time that's happened in this game. Boy, what a big play by the Cincinnati Bengals. And only 29 seconds left in the third quarter. A field goal would make it 17-9. to nine. They'd still trail by eight, so that's not going to help them an awful lot. Twenty seconds left in the quarter. The ball will be held by Hipple. At the 19, it's a 29-yard try for Ed Murray. He's still out of three. He's given them their only points. We have a 17-9 game with six seconds left in the third quarter. Don't forget the one that hit the upright a while ago. When this game is over, we'll be shipping you down to Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas for this one. The Redskins and the Cowboys, each 12 and 2. Everybody's been waiting for this one. And it's about to happen here on CBS right after this game. And we may be headed for a barn burning finish here. That field goal that hit the upright looms large in the scoring. The important thing in, on this kind of a situation that you get points, Jack. As long as you get points, you still got a chance. And uh, that's what the Detroit Lions are doing. That bad, that mishandled snap from center befuddles you, doesn't it? Oh, it's murder. That's really murder. After 14 league games, how that can happen. But it's happened. It happened once in a part of the Cincinnati Bengals and twice Detroit Lions. There's Forrest Gregg along the sideline. He doesn't have as large a coaching staff as most of the other head coaches. Now, he'd like to have one more, I think, and he probably will have like one more. Maybe he would get two more. I don't know, but I think he'd like to improve in a situation a little bit. Most coaching staffs in the league are 11 and 12 people. That's a lot of folks. Now, when Detroit kicked off to start the second half, Ray Horton returned at 50 yards. And Horton is back there along with Simmons. This play will bring us to the end of the third quarter. And they've got to do a good job of covering this kick. It is Simmons from the 13th. And they did. Well, they broke loose, didn't they? They came across the 30-yard line. And that's the end of the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter with a score. The Bengals 17, the Lions 9. We now pause for a word from the local station. The Bengals move from their 32-yard line, a first down. Stanley Wilson. Chased and run out of bounds by Kofer and others. 
And the Bears have just added a field goal. Those teams are in the fourth quarter, and Chicago leads Minnesota by 6 19 13. Well, you talk about running the football. The Cincinnati Bengals have had the ball on, on first and 10 24 times and have run the ball and thrown the ball only three out of 24 times on first and 10. On the other side of the football, the Detroit has had a 21 and has thrown eight times on first and 10. Wilson got two at second and eight. Incomplete, third and eight. Well, right after this game, it'll be the Redskins and the Cowboys, and then tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes, followed by a two-hour special all-star party for Blue Eyes, Frank Sinatra, then the Jeffersons, Goodnight Beantown, and Trapper John, M.D., what an evening on CBS. That pass intended for Curtis. Curtis hasn't caught one all day. Covered by William Graham. Yeah, and Curtis came into the game with 37 catches. Collinsworth hasn't appeared in the game at all for Cincinnati. Third down and long. Quickly to the sideline. Incomplete to Verser. Well, now the Bengals are sputtering, and perhaps that will open up the gates for the Lions. Always covering Verser. So Shorner can't get much done, can he? No, and, uh, and I'm surprised they had man for man coverage that time, Jack, and it looked like he hurt himself a little bit more than he had to. And uh, for that reason, wasn't set. Pete were planted right, and he threw the ball poorly. McAnally punting. And it'll be Robbie Martin hoping for a good return. He's inside the 30. Oh, a good. Well, not too good. And Martin takes it, fumbled. Picks it up, looking him go down. Inside the 35-yard line. The Lions are trailing 17-9, and they have the ball. After being KO'd earlier, there's Ken Anderson warming up along the sideline. And for Detroit, it is Gary Danielson at his 33. First down pass. Well, he had to be on the money. There were four people going toward the receiver, Norris. You don't see that many people around a tight end very often. Well, you do if you don't get a good fake that time. Uh, that time, it didn't look like a very good fake. I think the if you really do a good job of faking, the faking back should be tackled somewhere in the line of scrimmage. Uh, and then you, you occupy the linebackers and you hold people. If that doesn't happen, then the fake isn't too good. And the offensive linemen really have to do a good job of acting to make it look just like a run. Danielson three out of eight, a quick snap. That ball took off, incomplete. And he tried to get it downfield to Nichols. You can see the ball rising as we viewed it from the press box here. If he could throw a baseball like that, he'd be a big league pitcher for a long, long time, wouldn't he? Get a lot of strikeouts with that pitch. <laughs> Robert Jackson was covering, and it's third and ten. A lot of stuff on it. Hank. The, the passing and the kicking, the punting, has not been good here today because of the wet ball, the wet field, and everything that goes with it. Neither team, really. Yeah, and I, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it has an effect on a team that plays inside most of the time. It's hard to get used to it. I don't care what you say, there's still people, and it's tough to get used to. Third and ten. A whistle stops play. What happened? Que pasa? With 14-21 left. Procedure. Start, number 17. The call against the left tackle Dietrich. Third and 15. What did you say that was, Jack? False start. What did you say initially, though? The yeah, Oh, I see. You need some avocado dip for that. Down. Look at there. The 49ers leading Buffalo in the fourth quarter. 20 to 10, and the 49ers keeping the pressure on the Rams. Boy, if they're putting a lot of pressure on with that uh, score like it is right now, if they win, They'll be in good shape. Third and 15. Cincinnati shows a three-man rush. The four-man rush. Out of bounds. Incomplete. A heck of a try by Nichols, but incomplete. Needed a Canadian field to make that one go, Jack. And it'll be time for the Lions to punt with 14-14 left in the game and the Bengals leading by eight. Well, 
Lions appear to be putting the pressure on themselves. They play at home next Sunday in the Silver Dome against the tough defensive team, Tampa Bay. And they're starting to get some of their people back. We'll see them in Tampa Monday night. But they're starting to get some of their defensive people back and make it too tough. Big rush. Not too good a kick by Black. Pretty good bounce for Detroit. Well covered. Down to the 28-yard line. So Cincinnati has the lead and the ball at their own 28. 14 minutes left. 14 minutes left in the game. Bengals had to punt the last time they had it. They're at their 28. And they'll probably try to punch it out now. There goes the big guy. Takes three or four people to take him down. Look at that. Look at that. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. And of course, he has an advantage because he's running away from the overshifted defense. They're a man short over there, and uh, that makes a big difference, too, trying to tackle that big fullback, Johnson. Cobb was on the bottom of the pile, got help from Fantetti and Hall. And Johnson got four. Well, they've run the, had the ball 25 times now. Look at this overtime, New Orleans and Philadelphia in Philadelphia. Extra money for the players, right? Yes, overtime pay, yep. <laughs> Second down. Johnson again, first down. Oh, look at that pile, Lou. You see about eight people, and they're all moving in one direction. That's a first down run by Johnson out to the 39. That's what kills you when you're eight points behind. All he says, just load the wagon and I'll pull it. And that's what he does. 19 trips. 72 yards. I talked to uh, Mike Brown, uh, the general manager of the Cincinnati ben Bengals uh, yesterday and asked about uh, Pete Johnson's weight. And he said, yes, he, I, I said, it looks like he's lost a little bit of weight. He said, yeah, I think he has. Probably about two pounds. It's down to 268. <laughs> I'll probably do it again. He's across the 40. They're taking taking good advantage of the defensive alignment. I don't want to belabor the point, but again, they're overshifting and undershifting, and they continue to run away from the overshift or undershift, and they're doing a pretty good job of creating just enough of a gap for Pete Johnson to get through there. You give him any kind of a seam, he's going to make something happen. The Lions, who are playing today without Doug English, who has a bad knee, had that tackle by Gay and Curtis. And Detroit's very lucky to be playing, not to playing the Cincinnati Bengals without Chris Collingsworth, who came into the game with 66 catches. He's murdered. Second down and nine. A fake pitch to Johnson and the pass. Poorly thrown by Schroeder. He threw it off the wrong foot. And he's on the dead run in a hurry, didn't it's third down. Try to get it to Kreider. And he threw it upside down too, Jack. I mean the ball was upside down? I think it was. It's tough to throw it like that, man. Third down and nine. 11.40 left in the game. <laughs> Bengals have been ahead throughout. They led 14 to 6 at the half, and they lead 17 to 9 now, as each team had only a field goal in the third quarter. And Schoenert has to click on one. The way they're playing offensively, the defense, and especially teams of Detroit, they have to make it happen here this afternoon. Blitz. Look what happened there. The receiver tried to come back and help him out. Kreider, or Curtis, but the ball zipped over his head with McNaughton covering, and here's another Cincinnati punt. You know, McNaughton, in the last six games, has intercepted a pass in each one of the six games. Now, this is number seven. He's seven for seven in the last seven games. There's seven interceptions in the last seven games. Remarkable. Well, we saw Ken Anderson warming up earlier. He didn't come in. Schoener didn't get anything done. And Martin is back waiting for this kick from McAnally. It's hung high, way high. And Martin wisely let it go, and it's into the end zone. A good smart move by Martin. That stops the clock with 11.26 left in the game. Lions trail by eight. Hank, I don't want to be over dramatic, but it may be now or never for the Lions. That could be the case. 11.26 left in the game. They're at their 20 with Danielson. And they got a lot of time. 
And that ball bounced away from the receiver, Chadwick. And you've got to blame the uh, elements here, the wet ball, the wet turf. Ken Riley was covering Chadwick. And look what Danielson has done since taking over for Hipple. Not much, three out of 11. I think the move to get Danielson in the game uh, was a very good move, Jack. I think Danielson, being from Detroit, used to throwing in this kind of stuff. Cold weather, playing at Purdue, had the same kind of weather a lot of the times. He's more, I think, uh, in tune with this kind of stuff than Eric Hipple, who played his collegiate football at Utah State. Another incompletion. This one thrown low to the tight end, Norris. Third down, they're just incomplete, 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 and then punt. You know, the other thing that's happening, Jack, in this kind of their hurry, they see somebody open, they hurry their throw, and they're throwing with their arm rather than their legs. Most people think, you know, you throw with your arm, but you have to throw with your legs. You have to step and throw, so you have good balance and good follow-through. The quarterbacks are rushing themselves tremendously here this afternoon and throwing poorly for that reason. Third and ten. Six defensive backs including Griffin and Horton for the Bengals. And incomplete. Went through the hands of Scott, number 87. Fourth down and another punt. I think it's tough. I think when you're playing Detroit, you, you know, if you can stop the run and make him throw the win, I think it's going to be very, very difficult on them. They haven't been able to run the ball very well at all this afternoon, and for that reason, they've had a hard time moving the football period because they're such a run-oriented football team. There's Black with his sixth kick of the day. His last one was 60 yards, by the way. A good one. Simmons waiting to get it at his 40. The Bengals are going to be in good field position. And talking about the Bengals, you know, 19, since 1977, they have won 14 out of 20 games in uh, the month of December. Oh. The Bengals got the fumbled ball back at their 26-yard line. Simmons coughed it up, but the Bengals got it back. Ray Griffin recovered. 50-yard kick. Ten fifty-seven left in the game. The Bengals are at their 25-yard line. They should run right here if they run. How do they throw the ball? That surprises me. Swing pass. Johnson had it bounce off of him. Second down and 10. With 10.52 left, Gary Cobb was right where he should have been. As well as they've run on first and 10 uh, with 10.52 and trying to take as much time as they possibly can, I'm surprised that they would throw the ball on first and 10. They've done it very few times, only three out of 26 times. They've had the ball on first and 10, 26 times, and have only thrown the ball three times prior to the last one, which makes it four out of 24. Look at there. Six minutes left. The pass from Oliver Luck to Tim Smith. Houston leads, and Seattle's in trouble in the fourth quarter, though they lead by five. Here's the delay, and it's good for only three or four yards. The tackle made by Curtis Green. And it was Tate, Rodney Tate, running with the ball, third and seven for the Bengals. They really have to try hard to, to scrape that ball loose, especially if another tackler has a part of the ball carrier, the other guys coming in ought to try to scrape that ball loose to get good field position. Ball is at the Bengals 29. Third down. Now well, they got a one-on-one -on -one situation on the left side. Schoener looking left. Over the middle. Incomplete. Fourth down and kicking time for the Bengals. Off the hands of Dan Ross, the tight end. He's headed for the other league, isn't he? Yes, he is. And Steve Kreider was over there standing there. He's still standing there trying to impress the quarterback with the idea that he was open, but it's too late. Ancient history. The Lions still have a lot of time left, 10 4 They've got to come away here with better, with good field position. Here is a punt from McAnally. And back to get it is Robin Martin standing inside his 35. He ran one back for a touchdown this year. Oh, they block another. The ball belongs to Detroit no matter what happens, and the ball is at the 30-yard line. This time it was Johnson, the defensive back for Detroit. And Chadwick tried to catch it in the air. Johnson. Yeah, and Chadwick tried to catch it in the air and didn't and knocked it back. 
and they've lost they probably lost about five or six yards had, on that had he caught it he could have turned up field a little bit Hank. that's right that's what he was trying to do I think but he was running away there's the block Demetrius Johnson out of Missouri blocked the ball and he got a good angle very good angle this is what they needed the ball's at the 30 here's a delay and a gain of five yards by Vince Thompson, the fullback. Thompson to the 25. Well, it wasn't do or die on that last possession. We have 940 left. There's ample time for Detroit to get the two scores that they need. They've blocked three kicks today, including two punts against McAnally, who had not been blocked all year. Plus a field goal, which... Cincinnati probably would have made it. They were in very close. You know, I would try to get Billy Sims and a linebacker deep from this formation to the right side. Fumble. Sims fumbled, got it back. Close to a first down. Third down and less than a yard. Glenn Cameron, the tackler number 50. You know, Jack, when they have both receivers on the left side, they've got Billy Sims, Billy Sims in the backfield, and it looks like there's a chance that they maybe could try to match him. Looked like Cincinnati was offside. That's a first down in any event. But let's check the penalty. Yeah, there was. He may uh, have been drawn offside, so we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, but Simmons. definitely, definitely somebody from the right side of the uh, Bengal defense was offside. Looked like Eddie Edwards. Edwards made the tackle. He wasn't the one offside. Sims has carried now for 79 yards. The penalty makes it back to 77 yards. Side. First down. First down at the 15. Eight twenty-nine left in the game. Danielson trying to direct Detroit to their first touchdown of the afternoon. Looked like he was going to get bigger yards than he did. Sims got three or four before Cameron tripped him up. Those linebackers on the Bengals can move. I tell you, it's very difficult to take the ball from the left side of the formation and go all the way over to the right side within it without any kind of a fake, without any kind of deception. Boy, the way that defense pursues, it's murder to get over there before they get there to make the play. Sims went to the 13. Got three. Second and seven. 7.55 left. Got a yard after all that, and Cameron tackled him number 50. Here's another score for you to feast your eyes on. New Orleans won in overtime. They stay alive. A 50-yard field goal by Morton Anderson wins it for New Orleans in overtime, 20 to 17. And New Orleans is now eight and seven, and they're still in the hunt. But Third down and six from the 12-yard line. Even a field goal would be valuable for Detroit. Oh, yeah. If they don't get the touchdown, they got to go for the field goal. There's enough time. They trail by eight. They still held on to the ball. That's the important thing as Collins got in and sacked the quarterback. At the 24. The important thing in that situation, though, Jack, you can't take a chance of getting knocked back and losing yardage and taking your kicker farther back for the field goal. But he's got a strong leg. He's already kicked a 54-yarder. Here we see Danielson back in the pocket. Protection is pretty good. Burley finally gets through there. He tries to go to the outside, and Glenn Collins, number 76, makes the tackle. Okay, this is a 42-yard drive by Murray. He is three out of four today. No good. Well, that really hurts Detroit. And the, and the sack really hurt, didn't it? The sack, the sack was uh, was very bad. You, you know, in that situation, before it happens, you got to say to yourself, "I'm going to throw the ball." But in case, in case there's any kind of a problem, I'm going to throw it out, out out of the end zone or out of bounds or something. But you can't, 
afford to be in a situation where you, you take a loss. So the Bengals take over their 24-yard line with 6.28 left. Boy, that hurt the Lions. It really did. Ryder comes to the right, Curtis to the left. And they'll stay on the ground. He was blowing, wasn't he? He was. That offensive line of the Bengals has dominated most of the day. Hall tripped him up. Graham covered him. And he ran from the 24 out to the 40-yard line. Just saw a picture of Bill Johnson, who used to be the head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. the clock too and that hurts the Bengals if the penalties against them it's a holding call against Cincinnati right Jim you got it holding Gary Cobb made the tackle here comes Santa Claus there he looks is. like he's lost a lot of weight since the last time I saw him looks like a bunch of kids have climbed all over him he looks <laughs> a little disheveled <laughs> Pete Johnson has run 21 times 90 yards holding 62 still first down the call against Dave Lapham the left guard I tell you you have to give force Greg an awful lot of credit this team's gone through a lot of adversity throughout the year but off to a slow start but they've hung in there and they're getting better and better all the time and they ought to feel good about the way they played the last few weeks first and 20 at the 30 545 left 17 to 9 the Bengals lead Pete Johnson got four at the most. That's what he did get. Tackled by Fantetti. Now the old clock is killing the Lions. We have exactly five and a half left. There's Forrest Gregg along the sideline with a baseball cap. And that's George Seftick uh, to his left. He played football at Notre Dame and uh, is an also an assistant coach here for the Cincinnati Bengals. Second and 16. Tate is in the backfield with Johnson. Incomplete. Another bad throw. Well, we've seen some poor throwing today. Steve Kreider, the intended receiver, as soon as this game is over, will be the Cowboys and the Indians. The Redskins playing at Dallas. Schonert is four out of 17. The identical records of Washington and the Cowboys. Hank likes Dallas because of the AstroTurf and Dorset. I like the Redskins because they make fewer mistakes than most other teams. It's third and 16 here. We'll see that game right after this one. First down. Isaac Curtis with his second catch of the day. A first down, and that hurts Detroit. And what a big catch that was, and what a great catch. A low ball that he came back for. That was the key. He came back for the ball and made the catch. At the Detroit 47 and a first down. And it keeps the clock running. It's only the second one that Curtis had caught. We have exactly four and a half left in the game. Curtis left, Kreider right. Tight end on a wing. They're still throwing. Another first down. Tate out of the backfield caught the ball to the Detroit. 36-yard line with Graham covered. To the Detroit 36 and another first down. Tell you, Bruce Gosselin is doing a good job of calling plays for the Cincinnati Bengals. He's mixing them up, keeping them off balance, keeping the ball moving down the field, which is so very important. Four minutes left. Schoenert's getting hot now. At the wrong time as far as Detroit is concerned. Up, 
There goes Mrs. Johnson's little boy. For about five. Cobb and Green made the tackle. 3-3-3 three, three, three remaining here. 17 to 9, the Bengals lead. They've been ahead throughout, had a 14 to 6 halftime lead. Murray, three out of five in field goals, and Johnson has reached the century mark. 23 for 100. And two touchdowns, one of two yards, one of one yard. Second and four. Watch Johnson go again. He couldn't. Now he still go. Boy, he's murder, isn't he? He is really something. They mark it inside the 30. Down near the 27, making it third and one. And Minnesota dropped the game today to the Bears. That's a final score. The Bears over Minnesota, 19 to 13. And that's going to help Detroit, no matter what happens here today, because Minnesota is now 7 and 8, but the Bears are also 7 and 8. And a first down rush by Schoener. And now the Lions have only 2-11 left to do something about an eight-point deficit. That's another Cincinnati first down. They can, they can grind it out. That big pullback they have. Another first down. You know, Cincinnati last year threw the ball a lot more than they ran it. This year, they've reversed the procedure, and they've got pretty good balance with the run in the pass. They run the ball 33 times a game and uh, have thrown the ball 27, which is an indication of how much they feel how strongly they feel about the running ability and skill of Pete Johnson. The Lions have employed a timeout. They have two left. We have two 11 remaining. And then we'll get another timeout at the two minute warning. This Saturday, right after the New York Giant Redskin game, collegiate basketball, Louisville against the national champs, North Carolina State. Gary Bender and Billy Packer will have the action for you at 345 Eastern next Saturday. So it's a football basketball doubleheader on CBS next Saturday. Looks bad for the Lions. Looks like they put all the pressure in the world on themselves. They'll entertain Tampa Bay next Sunday in the Silver Dome. Yeah, that's not going to be, be an easy task either, although, as we talked about it earlier, you know, it's a funny thing how the personality of a team can change from week to week. I saw the films of the Pittsburgh Steelers and Cincinnati Bengals last week, and you wouldn't believe how bad how bad Pittsburgh looked, and then I saw him yesterday on television. You couldn't say it was the same team, and I think the same is true of the Detroit team. We thought they looked very good the last couple of times we've seen them play at home, and they don't look like the same team at all this afternoon. Talking about the manner with which they play. Monty Clark in the sideline, and I know he's very concerned. Detroit's won six out of eight. Here goes Johnson. At about three, and then he was driven back. 2.05 left. And did Detroit call timeout again? Yes, they did, and they have only one remaining. Yeah, they might as well use them. They can't hang them on the wall, Jack. They'll get another at the two-minute mark. That tackle by Alvin Hall. Detroit had come in here having won six out of eight. Two. Two minutes and one second. Two minutes and one second left on the clock. Jim Tunney, the referee, squares things away. 2.01 left. And Cincinnati leads by eight. They have 202 up there on the clock. The referee told us 201. Meanwhile, second down and seven for the Bengals. They chew up the clock and the yardage and protect the lead. Johnson drives inside the 20 yard line and that takes us to the two minute warning actually 157 left in the game but they'll stop the clock you know jack i mentioned what a fine job forrest greg has done with his team after starting off very slowly i think the same thing has to be said about monty clark 
and his coaching staff, they got off to a poor start too, but he was able to sell his team on the idea that they could come back and win, and they're still in a good position, even though they played poorly here this afternoon. They're gonna lose this football game. Monty Clark, I think, and his coaching staff, you have to give him a lot of credit for bringing his team back like they have, and they're still in a good position to win the conference, and that's what it's all about, and getting a chance to play in the playoff. There's Forrest Gregg on the other side with George Sefcik in front of him in the orange costume. Well, the word we get now with all the mathematics to be applied is that uh, Minnesota has been eliminated along with Chicago. And now the big opponent for Detroit for the conference title is Green Bay. They're 7-7, seven and seven, and they play at Tampa Bay tomorrow night. So Minnesota and the Bears have been eliminated. That's the word we got in this very complex system. And other teams will bite the dust this afternoon. Or in this case, bite the mud if they have the kind of weather that we have. Well, here's what's happening here. It's third down and two for Cincinnati at the 17. Detroit only has one timeout remaining. One timeout remaining. And if Cincinnati gets a first down, all they have to do is hang on to the ball and the game will be over. So you can look for Johnson again. Tate in the backfield with him. Well, that's it, folks. The clock's going to run. Detroit will use their final timeout with 1.46 remaining. Now it looks like Cincinnati may score again. Alvin Hall and Bruce McNaughton tackled Johnson. That was a great illustration of the great cutback ability of Johnson. He started to his left. They over-pursued, and that's one thing you can't do against this team. The way he runs, you, if you over-pursue and get a, get a try at trying to tackle with your arms, you're not going to make the tackle. He's going to run right through it. There's a final. San Francisco 23, the Buffalo Bills 10. But going back to Johnson, if he gets a side shot of you, you're never going to make the tackle. He cut back beautifully and made a big gain down to the six-yard line. He's a little more subtle than he appears to be. He's a more clever runner than he uh, appears to be. Yeah, he is. And he's got, you know, the great thing about him is he's got very, very good quickness for a big guy. No more timeouts for the Lions. Although they still uh, list one up there on the board, but they're out of timeouts now. And Johnson has rushed for 118 yards. He had a two-yard run and a one-yard run for a touchdown. He's had a busy day. And apparently he has helped the Bengals upset Detroit here. They're going to have their hands full next Sunday at uh, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay not only has a good, they're at home at Pontiac. Tampa Bay not only has a good defense, but when they get James Wilder or other good runners on track, brother, they can score some points on you. Yeah, they make it tough on you, and I think Jack Thompson is doing a very good job. He's come along very well, the young quarterback who they got from Cincinnati. Well, that'll be the final week. That'll be the final week of regular season play. Tampa Bay at Detroit. Another big game is Green Bay against the uh, Chicago Bears, depending on how Green Bay does in the Monday night game, which Hank and I will broadcast on CBS Radio tomorrow night. They play at Tampa Bay. Well, the ball's at the five, and it's first and goal. The Detroit game at the Silver Dome starts at 4 o'clock. And the Bengals darn near got in with a run by Larry Kinnebrew, a 252-pound running back from Tennessee State. Now we're down to 50 seconds. 45. I, I talked to Paul Brown before the season. He was very, very excited about Kinnebrew. He thought he was going to be sensational. He hasn't done that much, but they still think he's a great prospect. Well, Detroit did have another timeout left, and they employ it right here. Cobb and Hall made the tackle. About a yard and a half away from the goal line. Put in another dry football. Executive producer Terry O'Neill, produced by Charles H. Milton III, directed by Larry Cavalina, associate director Ernie Bauer, field technical manager Roxana Dunnett, broadcast associate Rich Gentile, and others who worked on our telecast today from. Riverfront Stadium. A win here makes the Bengals 
seven out of eight, a chance for 500. And there's Monty Clark. He'll have to put in a tough week's work to get his troops ready for Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay will have a shorter work week after their Monday night game. And right after this one, Redskins at Dallas. And what more need we tell you about that? Thank you, John Drod, with our stats. And Billy Breslin, our spotter here this afternoon. 3.30 Eastern next Sunday, Tampa Bay visiting Detroit. Well, they probably run to the left. Kennebrew was stopped. Kennebrew was stopped by Fantetti, who stuck his nose in there. And now they haven't started the 32nd clock, and so this game is over, folks. The final score is 17 to 9 as Cincinnati has won it. There's no need for them to run another play, but apparently they want to try to get more points. Yep. With 15 seconds left in the game, they're going to try to get in. It's third down and goal to go. This time they look like they're going to go straight ahead. And did they get in? No, they did not. No touchdown is indicated, and this game's over with 17 to 9, the final score. 17 to 9, the Bengals have won it. Detroit still has to win a game to win the division title. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this word from your local station.